again, I'm Becca, I play Elspeth the Bard, and I will let the others introduce themselves. Maka, uh, Ami, who plays our wizard Maka, is, as per usual, running late, so she will join us when she can. So hopefully we'll see her later. And I don't know if Sam's back yet, but if he's not, he's gone to make a cup of tea, so he'll be here in a minute. Uh, but I will let everyone else introduce themselves. Uh, we went bottom up last time, so top down, I guess. Uh, hi, everyone. Azuzu uh, playing Copy, the arcane trickster gunslinger. Oh, my next. No, not Batman's next. Oh, hey, guys. Uh, I'm Dom. I'm playing Trevi Nix, the wood elf. Okay, I'm Fosro. I'm playing Erat, and you'll find out what I'm playing later. Sam, I'm playing Toto, half fine, the half loom range. Scott, or is it me? No, sorry, I can't tell because I'm on mobile. Uh, hi, I'm Scott, Delta's DM, and let's see whose brains I'll be sucking out this week. <laughs> and I'm Traz, I'm playing Cloud the Tabaxi Rogue Warlock. So that's the team for tonight, and I have volunteered myself to do the recap, so bear with me. I believe we started off the night last week trying to give Toto some time by himself with his lady love. Um, we failed because our wizard did not pick up on the hints, so she tagged along with Toto while the rest of us went to Gilmore's to try and make it less hard for, less easy for Elspeth to die. Um, Trevi, I think, wandered off if I remember correctly. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we got to Gilmore's, uh, Elizabeth slash Copy, and Traz had a chat in Fees Cant around the back of the building while Elspeth went in and got a cool ring. Meanwhile, Toto was taking Adria and Maka to the inn for lunch. Uh, got there, went to check on Clover, our direwolf, who we found, who they found had disappeared and no one could tell what had happened to her. Um, so at that point, they messaged over to Elspeth, who, along with Elizabeth slash Copy, went to help find the dog, uh, while Cloud carried on to check on his younger brother. I'm going to say younger, I don't know if that's for sure. Um, when he got to his younger brothers, he found him in the basement being attacked by a coat that kept trying to connect itself to him and some kind of psychic headband, if I remember correctly. Managed to save him from that, only to have Mind Flayer, mm. Dr. Woodrow from the previous West Run, turn up on the door and demand her stuff back. They managed to escape. Meanwhile, the other side of the city, fuck, this is why we shouldn't split up, guys. <laughs> um, meanwhile, the other side of the city, we managed, Elspeth managed to find out that the, in, the barmaids, all three of them, had had their memory modified. She messaged both suspects in the dog disappearance and got a cryptic message from both of them. Uh, Toto and Adria went and Maka went outside to try and look for more clues. Elspeth teleported away to basically go and grab information from the gentleman that runs her orphanage. Um, on finding that Elspeth had fucked off by herself, Toto, Elizabeth, Maka and Adria went to the mm -hmm. Emerald Heart, which was the brothel, to go and basically get drunk to which they did go and get drunk. Uh, Elspeth came back <laughs> to the inn to find no one there and decided to wait for them to reappear. Meanwhile, she heard screams uh, from one of the alleys, so she went a little way to investigate and then decided not to go any further, messaged all the others and they were on their way. Um, so all the others turned up, including what we thought was Cloud. So we go investigate the screams. 
uncover a mannequin's body and turn around to find Cloud wasn't Cloud, he was Dr. Woodrow, and we ended up fighting her. Um, Elizabeth slash Coffee got her brain sucked out and died, and we managed to kill Dr. Woodrow. Uh, Adria came running around the corner, managed to bring Elizabeth back to life, and Cloud turned up like five minutes later, and I believe that's where we left off. Did I miss anything out? That's bang on the money. Jesus, please, God, we need to stop splitting up. That was effort. <laughs> that was effort. Effort did pretty well. Yeah, well done. I mean, that fucker. <laughs> you just missed out my hentai Looney Tunes escape. I did miss out the octopus grappling the tentacle faced monster. What? All the tentacles, all the time. I like this man. I think that the last episode should be called Happy Hentai Hour. I don't think I can call it that on YouTube. I'm pretty sure they'll ban it. <laughs> if you just put H star star Thai, you'll be fine. <laughs> I like it. Work around. This is where we go. He's the ideas man. <laughs> anyway, so. It's, fairly, it's getting fairly on in the evening, and most of the party are now currently slumped in an alleyway, thinking, holy fuck, that was a bit of an effort. Fairly, I wouldn't say most, I think most of you were okay during that fight. I don't think anyone got seriously hurt, apart from the obvious head injury that Coffee suffered. No, I'm fairly lightly injured. Sure, call that a head injury. But did you die? Oh, wait. <laughs> sure, again, call it a head injury. That was a minor inconvenience when you got a cleric from the corner. But, yeah, so... As you guys are just taking stock of what the fuck just happened... Let's go see what our druid was up to during that whole entire fiasco. Hi, Trevi. Oh, hey, guys. You had wandered off, but just a little less than a day beforehand. Again, you've never been into a city, let alone the main city of uh, Taldori, that is Amon. So you were easily distracted and kind of got lost wandering about in the, aimlessly in the city until you came across what looked like a bunch of fi- uh, frightened people who were complaining about some oversized dog that had got into their pantry. Do you wish to do anything about it, or you want to just ignore it? I do like dogs, so yeah, I'm gonna go and look at the dog. Go for a look. Cool. Make me a nature check. Fourteen. You see large paw prints. I was leaning into the back of this person's house, and they're saying, uh, "It's a." Elven couple who are just like, it just came out of nowhere and just started reading our stuff last night. We don't know where it came from. It, it, they just notice you just kind of just like walking past them as they're talking to other people. You go in and you find what looks like a giant dog. Well, or at least an oversized wolf pup by the looks of it. Oh. Can I try? Yeah, you just put your hand on it and it's back in it. It's turned around. It's got like like bits of meat from the pantry that it's managed to get into. Just like sits there with his big doughy eyes, just sitting with meat in his mouth, just chomping away as you're just like petting his fur. And you happen to notice on its back head a black spot that looks like a four leaf clover. Oh, that's so sweet. Can I try and persuade this animal to come with? Make an animal handling check. Damn. Natural one. The wolf just seems to look at you and then just 
fuck this shit, I'm out, and just starts walking, and just makes its way with a bit of speed out of the uh, the backyard of this couple's house, and just starts making their way down the street. Much to the surprise and absolute frightening of several of the citizens of Ramon, they're like, holy shit, it's a dire wolf, ah! Uh, I'm just gonna follow it, follow it out. Cool. As you go following it, you notice that you're like chasing after it again. It's quite a bit faster than you until it comes to an immediate stop. And it's almost as if it's like caught a scent or something. And it's gonna just like heavily <laughs> and looking about. Uh, I'm just going to watch and wait, see where it goes. I'm going to keep a bit of a distance because obviously I know it doesn't like me too. It keeps sniffing around and looking about as if something's caught its attention, but you're not quite sure what until eventually it takes a slightly more aggressive stance and it starts to paw its way down somewhere where you can hear... Faintly a distance, kind of like raised voices and what sounds like a, a younger person, maybe a child, maybe a teenager, screaming as oh. if like someone can't handle them. Um, is there anything around me, like any like meat? Is there like a, a butcher's or like a stall that sells sausages or something? Uh, there looks like someone who has just opened up their windows has just put a little steak pie out to cool on the windowsill. I'm having that. Right for a second away. Right, make me a stealth check, see if you can nab it without their attention. Ah. As you're thinking, oh, I'm going to take this and try and convince the wolf to come, you just, like, a spatula comes out the window and just like, smack. No! Back off! I spent all morning baking that. You know, piss off. And they shut the windows over. Taking a pie back inside. Ah. Uh, um. Hmm. I'm going to look for, uh, yeah, maybe, um, I don't know. Uh, maybe, uh, do something like, um, produce a flame. Is it? Did it go off into the trees? So what was that? Well, did it go off into like a, a wooded area or something? It's like a large alleyway at the back of like a slight little housing estate that you've ended up managing to get yourself into. I'm I'm just gonna have a little look around the corner then, see see uh, what's going. On. Yeah, you see the wolf itself is kind of took position near like a. Uh, a wall and it's peering around the corner but you're like a kind of building a wall behind it if that makes sense and as you turn and look you see further down the alleyway you see a group of rather nasty looking gentlemen and two young girls and they're trying to get a, uh, get their hands on oh okay so it's not the wolf making pause the wolf picked up on something and it's like hmm this sounds like trouble um, can I cast uh, Animal Friendship? Sure, go ahead. Is there a save that the that Clover will have to make? Yeah, Wisdom. Uh, Becca, do you have oh. stats for Clover? I think I, I did have them at some point. Yep. Could you roll the Wisdom save? I can. I accidentally cast it at level three. Yeah, That's she my does bad. Like okay, completely ignoring her last previous statement, she didn't just turn around and just go and barks and subtitles comes up. Friend! <laughs> <laughs> so, you're now friends with the dire wolf. You see down this alleyway a bunch of raw nasty gentlemen trying to get a hold of two young girls. Uh, can I use polymorph on one of the girls? 
sure what you're trying to pull and morph them into. Uh, I'm trying to see what I can pull and morph them into. Um, like another wolf. Cool. Which child, left or right? Just out of curiosity. Which one looks the... more vulnerable? Uh, both are equally kind of uh, in a bad way of things with these guys. Just like, yeah, we can get a few coins for these two lads if we just burrow them up and you cast Polymorph. Uh, go left then. Cool. Polymorph. And the small child turns into a wolf. Which gives the guy a bit of a whoa, that was fucking unexpected, but uh, you reckon if we can get them to teach them tricks, we get a few extra gold at them? And a couple of his mates are like, yeah, they ain't going to do much. Oh, that backfired. As you're okay. aware in the way doing this, we have, you can hear in the distance, heavy footsteps and a clanking of armor coming around the corner. Would force like to describe the cat in question. It's just walked around, seeing two. Uh, what he heard was two ch- uh, young girls getting man- trying to get manhandled off a group of really creepy old men. Coming around the corner, you see a six foot eight black dragonborn in full armor, uh, scar tissue down the left side of his face, very disgruntled look on his face, and he's not pleased at what these guys are doing. In his hands, you also manage to see that he's got in his hand a dual-bladed scimitar ready to go. Okay. As you walk in the corner, you see that one of the kids that you heard screaming a minute ago is now turned into a wolf. At the opposite end of the alleyway, you see a dire wolf and a druid just kind of standing there like, hi, uh... He's a wolf at opposite ends of the alleyway. These guys are in the middle with the kids. Oh, How many guys are there? The group of thugs consist of four guys. Mostly human. There's one uh, dwarf kind of hanging in the back with what looks like a net. Well, hmm. some sort of trapping instrument anyway. I shouted at the four guys. Oh, shit. I shout to the four guys going, you've got you've got two seconds to back away. You can leave past me or you can leave blooded, bruised, and maybe missing some things. But the children... If you just click on the word intimidation, it should give you the... There you go. They all look at one another and then just kind of, and the dwarf goes, Hmm, I wonder how much we'll get for his fucking hide, eh? And they all kind of just like, kind of smuck amongst themselves and go, Yeah, we're going to bag the kids first and then we're going to go for him. And then they kind of turn around and notice the druid with the third die off and go, Holy fuck, it's like, it's like winter crest, man. Look at all this shit. Are they all sort of. Uh, uh, are the uh, the children and wolf like away? But five feet in front of them all. The rest are all, the men are all kind of like in a semicircle around them. Hmm. I just shout down the corridor to the druid. Are you going to help the kids or are you going to help the guys? Oh, me? Yeah. yeah. You're the druid. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was, uh, I was just looking at spot. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to help these kids. Okay. Take the two on the left, I'll take the two on the right. Okay. Okay. Uh, if, what would you guys like to do as a 
three action each because these guys were not expecting a big ass dragonborn and a druid with her new doggo walking around the corner. I'm just going to charge the closest one on the right. Cool. Charge forward. And mm-hmm. what does Trevi do as he's charging forward? Uh, I am going to cast um, Cool Lightning um, at a point sort of far away back enough that they are going to uh, it's only going to affect those guys at the Cool. I'll say just for the kind of screen this little introduction bit here as uh, Dragonborn just charges forward, scimitar in hand. The first guy he steps up is just like, just pulls a dagger and is just like, eh, maybe this wasn't the best idea ever. And whack. I think he loses everything from below the right elbow down in the first swing, just as uh, his rest of his colleagues kind of recoil back the lightning bolts down from the sky that Trevia just called in. Smack one, smack two, and then he just like drop their shit and then start running the fuck away. Then a little kind of like slip, but then in the middle of the alleyway, there's like fuck this shit. Nope, not worth it. The dwarf drops the netting, and they all just fuck right off. You've now got a rather scared yet kind of relieved little girl, and a very happy looking uh, wolf pup right next to her. From the other girl who was turned into one. <laughs> I, I kind of uh, go over to the one that I turned into a wolf and say, kind of don't know why I did that. I'm, I'm sorry for turning into a wolf, but trust me, it's better than being a human. Try it for Yeah, that's all the head cock thing. I was like, oh, do I have to cast, speak with animals to do that? <laughs> No, no, I, I'll say that she, the, the general idea is brought across, but she's just kind of sitting there like going, this is, like, unusual. I've never been turned into an animal before, kind of, like, and giving that sort of, like, vacant dog look as if, like, this is kind of surreal. Does Polymorph not wear off? Yeah, after an hour, I believe. An hour, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's concentration, so you can just drop the concentration. You think I'm going to drop it? (laughs) I dropped the one... I dropped down to one knee and asked the little girl if she lives close by. Uh, The one that's still... The one that can still speak... The one that can still speak English, yeah. She's kind of like pointing down the alleyway that uh, the Trevi came from. Do you want us to take you home? Just as a very slow head nod. Right. Just turn to the druid and say, you can come with me or you can go continuing on your way, but I'm going to take what I assume is meant to be two girls home? They were two girls before you arrived, yeah. I think. I'll say two children and not one child and a puppy. Just not to assume, yeah. I'll take them home. I'll, I'll, yeah, I kind of want to come too. I'll okay. see if it's see, see them get home. That's fine. I just put the scimitar back on my back. Okay, sheave it back in. And the next thing that a bunch of people outside the alleyway who are wondering what the commotion was just see is this big, heavily armored dragonborn. It drew. Uh, Elf Druid is TV or is she Human Druid? I can't remember. Yeah, Wood Elf, yeah. Wood Elf, Wood Elf Druid with two little kids. It looks like the weirdest sort of like foster family ever just stepping out of this uh, well, alleyway with the direwolf. Technically, behind. it's one direwolf, one kid, and a puppy. Since yeah, I'm that's friends the... with direwolf, can I sit on their back? Nails down, lets you get in the back. Yes. I'm just going to take the children home. Cool. 
they actually lead you back to the house that had the pie in the window. And when the kind of matronly figure who like smacked uh, Tree V with the spatula a minute ago sees him and goes, Who for pillow sick? And kind of bursts out and goes, What happened? I found these children in distress, so did the druid from the looks of it. The druid tried to help. Kind of helped. The guys ran away. I uh, kind of gesture towards the uh, the kid that is now a wolf and uh, say that they'll be fine in about an hour's time. This is why I hate magic. This is the majorly figure just kind of looks at you as if like, I, I, I'm, you're the one who tried to... She kind of goes back in the house and when comes back with the pie and goes like, here. And takes up a lot of uh, couple of slices and puts it, wraps them up, hands them over. I'm gonna give mine to the direwolf, obviously. I thank the matron for her kindness and say I didn't want any reward; just wanted to make sure the children were safe. Uh, th- thank you both very much. Thank you. you she thinks the kids. I leave you two for like thirty minutes to bake a pie, and you run off and cause all sorts of trouble. And Actually, get no. Actually, get off the carpet. No, stop tearing up the carpet. I know you're only. And the one that's a wolf now is just like kind of like scratching away at the kind of uh, front room carpet now, just as you hear the door shut. Turns it in. Left outside, just like what are you doing now? I stay to the. you go. I've finally got a chance to kind of look this really tall dragonborn dude up and down. I'm just kind of like, um, yeah, just like looking up, staring in a very obvious kind of way. Uh, let's look down and go, have you not seen a dragonborn before? Or armor? Or any kind of defensive or thought-provoking situation? Very few. I've never seen Dragon Ball, and I've very rarely seen it. That would be the spellcaster way, the squishier the bear. I uh, kind of extend uh, a hand, as I was sort of shown before, um, and do a really kind of lackluster and confused handshake, and introduce myself as Tree. I extend my hand out, trying not to crush the elf's hand, and just introduce myself as Erat, the dragon knight, the dragonborn knight. Nope. As you both formally shake hands, you just get uh, the dire wolf just kind of like nuzzle in between the two of you. You have a cute dog. Oh, I actually kind of forgot. That we uh, that I that I found this little dude. He's all right, isn't he? Yeah, it's a good dog. He's got good senses. Good hunting companion. Oh, I don't hunt. The dog does. I don't eat meat. I'm a vegan. You should like, know that about like, me. I'm liking the dog more now. As you both kind of have your little back exchanges back and forth, eventually the dial wolf kind of again picks up another scent. Though this one doesn't seem like as if it's like, oh, trouble ahead. It seems like its eyes go a bit wide for a moment. And it starts kind of like nudging these both as if, like, come this way, come this way. I think the dog well, wants us I'm to follow. I'm going to follow the dog. I'm going to follow the dog. You don't have to follow the dog. No, I'm going to follow the dog. It's, it's, it's got good senses. I'll follow the dog for now. Maybe more We're not hunting. Anymore. We're not hunting animals. Well, if you can call people in this city human. Oh, I like that. I'm going to use that. Let's hunt some people. Let's shed some blood. As you guys kind of come to a consensus to go and follow uh, the direwolf, it will eventually just kind of speed this process up. It eventually leads you to an area where it looks like a house that has been 
broken into. You know, when you look inside, there's a handful of like crushed rats with little exposed uh, cranial areas with the brains are sticking out of. It looks like several markings that you could swear belong to an octopus on like nearby furniture and the walls. Very strange. And then again, the wolf picks up the scent and then carries off in another direction. You're basically on the track of the party leading up to the meeting up with them later, which I will then jump to the party currently sitting in the middle of this alleyway. Their arrival will be at some point in the future, but for now, after a deadly encounter with Dr. Woodrow, finally putting an end to the squid-faced bitch once and for all, and the timely intervention of Adria to, you know, save Coppy's life. What are you guys doing right now? Um, <clears throat> the moment Coppy kind of opens her eyes, um, because she'll she'll know that her illusions drops, she will immediately change again back into uh, her persona of uh, Elizabeth. Uh. Yeah. Do you want anybody else? Right. Cloud just comes bobbing around the corner and just sees the dead body on the floor and just goes, I got it as quickly as I got your message thing. I've been doing a lot of running today. So, uh, what the fuck happened? What, like, where the fuck has everyone been all day? We've ended up fighting this fucking thing. Elizabeth was dead for a minute. Where the fuck has everyone been? Well, I was, uh, tangling with her earlier. Gesturing to Woodrow. Every now and again, you see Woodrow's body kind of twitch after the electrical uh, current from the lightning effect of the arrows from the sky uh, sky sentinel. Every now and again, just kind of flutter up, and she's just like twitches, like a tentacle, supposed to like spontaneously just like wiggle around, just dead on the floor. I think I've got her this time. The first time she twitches, Cloud just launches a dagger at her face. Dagger flies past, <laughs> sticks in the skull. There's still the occasional little, like, faint twitch. And they kind of figure, okay, she's dead, and it's just a really bizarre academy experiment gone wrong here. Everybody all right? I think so. Um... Elspeth's, I don't know, kind of point behind me, back there. Um, you probably want to go and check on her. I think she's okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I stay from the alleyway. Just wasn't expecting Cloud to not be Cloud. Excuse me? She pretended to be you. Ah. Yes. That would be um, a bit awkward. Well, she's dead now, so that's something. That's one person that wants us all fucking dead off of our tick list. Can I loot a corpse? I think Amy already looked at her la uh, last week. Ah, oh, fair enough. Who will just be standing there like, I found the key! And shows you this kind of like... Lovecraftian copyright infringing key. Okay. <laughs> I think she found some platinum on her as well. I can't remember how much, but... Uh, oh, I can't remember. 
Yeah, something like that. But yeah, she'll show everyone the loot that she got off her. Well, maybe we should leave the key for another time. I mean, it's going to be a room in our office, surely? Which means going back to Westrun. Fuck that. Mm. Well, I'm pretty sure we checked everywhere in there. Unless it was to the room that we sort of Jehote helped us get into. Well, maybe there's another place here. I assume she's not sleeping on the streets. Uh, so... mm. Well, we've... Mm, maybe not the best time, but um, I'm guessing there might be another gesturing towards the body. A uh, tentacle one here in the city. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Toto's going to look at Elizabeth and say, just like while she's on the floor, just straight over the, the top of her face. How you doing? How you feeling? Toto will get a message in his head saying, been better. Why are you still doing that shit? What shit? Use your words. Uh, I've Tongue's been... still in the move, by the way. Oh yeah, I know that. Toto doesn't. No one knows just... that. Other than Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, I'm just sure that when, when Revivify took effect, it only healed up the head injury. The tongue removal still in effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm using the um, earring. Yes, um, I'll message him back saying, I've been compromised. Uh, I'm being followed. The less I talk, the less you guys are compromised. Can I insight check that? Insight check? Now, this is trick again, because I'm not lying. I have been compromised. But you're not telling the whole truth. Okay, so that's deception. It's normal because I'm not pass trying to pass myself to someone else. Could anybody do an insight? Anyone who's present is free to do an insight check if they wish. So, 17 matches, so I think 17 succeeds then? Yeah, you guys match. However, Cloud can tell us a little bit extra that you're not letting on. Although Cloud can't hear it, because it's a psychic message. So Cloud has no idea what Copy said. That's true, sorry. Yeah, you are correct. Yeah, so Toto, Toto will know it's not... The hundred percent truth, but there is an element of truth in it. All right, in the uh, back through the earpiece. All right, seems kind of weird, but you are weird, so guess I'll, I'll let it slide. And he'll kind of offer a hand uh, to help you up. I'll take it, uh, get up and drop him a message saying thank you. Um, I will warn you, your motor control isn't exactly on point given the circumstances you're currently in. So when you get up, you can stagger a little and it might take you a little bit of adjustment to get back on your feet, per se. Sure. Um, by the way, on the note of people that want us dead... I have some information about Jackson that we may want to discuss in the inn, although I would like to make a stop off before we get there. I'd quite like to walk Adria back unless uh, Adria's coming back with us. I'll look at her. She looks at you all and goes, I think I'll kind of hang around for a few more minutes just to See so you all get back safe. Well, I don't know if anyone would want to come with me, considering I'm about to walk into a guard's, uh, guard's building. I don't know what it's called. Um, 
I don't know if any of us is quite on the right <laughs> side of the law, but I don't know if many of us would be able to walk in there and walk out. Uh, it's specifically looking at Elizabeth, but also generally glancing at the rest of them. Uh, but you're more than welcome to accompany me. Let's not split again. Yeah, running around the city is a little bit tiring. Uh, so Elspeth will know where the closest guard house is, so can she make her way to that one, please? Cool. You start making your way. In this instance, you're going to hear a clunking of heavy metal and large paw prints. You see Clover being ridden by Trevi with some badass motherfucking looking pa- uh, dragonborn just kind of following a trail that they're going to go until eventually they realize that the trail they were following was actually Cloud. That's adorable. The fact that Clover was tracking Cloud's tail, that's adorable. <laughs> hey friends, the quad I found. Oh my god, you found Clover. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And I'm going to run over and hug Clover around the neck. Oh, okay, you, know this, uh, you know this new friend? I was just going to look at the druid and go, you better be talking about the dog. Oh, uh, yes, I'm very much talking about the dog. Sorry, you are? Errat. Nice to meet you, I'm Elspeth. Um, you also seem to have found our errant druid, so thank you for that as well. He, he helped save some children. She, she both of them are she. <laughs> Sorry, she helped save some children, I think. Unless one of them's still chewing on the carpet. Oh dear. Uh, what spell did you cast, Truvy? We call it Polymorph. So do I. You know you can drop that, correct? You didn't have to send her home chewing the carpet. I think it's fun to be a wolf, to be honest. Maybe in a forest, not so much in a house. Would you like to be polymorphed? Try it, my dear. See how uh, see how far it gets you. You know I don't understand sarcasm. I'm just going to put a hand on the druid's shoulder and just be like, maybe enough polymorphing for one day, she- young friend. She wouldn't manage it, it's fine. Well, they helped save some children, so they're fine by me just now. And this dog seems to have better senses than your druid does anyway. (laughs) Clover has better senses than most of us. Where on earth did you go, Clover? We were so worried. Not that I can understand the damn dog, but I'm going to talk to her like I can. Oh, I can understand her. Him? Her? Her. Him. You want me to talk? You want me to convey a message? No, it's alright. She understands. It's just me that can't understand her. Hey, Toto! We found Clover. Yeah, boy! That means we can just... Sack off finding these uh, serial killers and shit and uh, gets to drinking, right? Mm. I second that. Who do you second, dearest? Me or him? Both. (laughs) (laughs) Good answer. (laughs) Honestly, if you guys want to go in and sit in the inn and get a drink that's absolutely fine i will literally be two moments the guard's house is just here the inn is just over there no way we're all going also trevi good work finding the dog i'll put big thumbs up and stroke the dog. i also found this stick i'll give you a stick <laughs> it's a nice stick thanks it's actually just for the sake of flavoring. That stick is about just equal, just enough height for you to use as like a walking stick. 
or cane rather because the way the branch is shaped. Oh, this is very nice. And I'll kind of swing it once as well. Tap it on the ground. This is beautiful. Thank you very much. You are great to have around. Would I have <clears throat> would I have overheard the comment about serial killer? Oh, you would have, yeah. Just gonna chime in and be like, someone said something about the serial killers. Now, I don't go after people that don't deserve it, but the magic word serial killer kind of boils my blood a bit. Would you care to elaborate on that, please? Uh, there is a gentleman running around the city. Hmm. Wrong terminology for serial killer. Hmm. Of course, well, I'm going to use it anyway. Um, running around the city, murdering, for lack of a better word, prostitutes. In a very unpleasant way. Okay. And we are... He should be... He should be skinned. Mm. I have better plans for him, don't worry. But we are currently hunting him. If you feel like joining a hunt, you are more than welcome. I like to hunt beasts of all types, especially the ones that walk on two legs. Yo, this this boy's going to be hard to skin, you know, because sometimes he's made out of just shadows. We are not... And he's, that's, you, can't, you can't skin a shadow. We are not skinning him. I have better plans. I don't want him dead. You don't have to be dead to be skinned. No. Yeah, but you, you're going to have skin. He ain't got skin. He's just a big shadow with a smile. <laughs> then we can find another way. But he will be punished. Yes, he will be. Uh, on that note, I'm going to... I assume I'm right by the guard's house. And I'm going to walk in. Yep. You walk in. I would say it's like a small guard at post because I've not got my book handy to see what the actual layer of him on is right this second. So it will be just like a guard outpost. Just yeah. greetings, Simpson. Good evening. Kind of, um, maybe mustached kind of guardsman just kind of standing behind the desk. Um, I'm wondering if you can do me a very small favor, my dear. I am doing some research into this horrible, horrible man that's going around killing people with that horrible knife. I think people are calling him the Ripper. I was wondering if potentially you had a list of his victims' names, or of course those ones that we know at least. And if so, if I could have a copy of it. Make a persuasion check. Tweeny one? Tweeny one. Uh, more, more than enough. He goes into his little cabinet next to him and says, uh, just a moment with that. And fusses from some papers and pulls out the list and hands, this is the ones that we know about, and hands you over a little document. How long is the list looking right now? Well, when he hands over the document, it goes from A5 size to then folds it to A4 and then has a second sheet on the back of it. Oh, Jesus, okay. So I'm going to fold that up and pop it in my pocket and go, thank you very much. Honestly, I do hope you, hurt, you get him soon. But I am going to go and continue my research. One thing you do notice when you glance at the names is that dates on the uh, uh she's not got her glasses book. on so she can't read a thing i thought she had them on just by like no. casual wear but okay uh well i'll keep that point for later then cool. yeah the guardsman gives us uh and knowing goes uh good luck on your research thank you and i will walk out and go back to the others and go well i've got what i came for so if we are ready to go back to the inn and plan our method of attack. Uh, before, well, uh, as we start walking back to the inn, uh, Toto will see that copy, oh, Elizabeth, sorry, is uh, still a bit um, uneasy on her feet after having her brain sucked out. So he'll get the, uh, the magic carpet out and put it in front of her, like to suggest that she, she sit on it. And then right before she does, he'll sit in it and take off. 
<laughs> is this, is this um, Toto doing to copy? Yeah. I mean, her functioning, body functioning is a bit slow at the moment, so she'll be slow to react to it anyways. Uh, but then she'll kind of get herself up and start walking towards the inn. I guess that's where we're going, because I missed a couple of seconds. Yes. Uh, I, will, I will extend my hand and go, would you like a hand? You seem uneasy on your feet. Uh, this is the Dragonborn? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I'll just give the Dragonborn a thumbs up and just kind of ex take, take his hand and get up. No problem. If you require a hand, simply ask. I'll, I'll give like a coin nod. Like... Mm. And then follow everyone to the end. Who is in at the end? The receptionist kind of just looks at you all as if like, uh, your rooms are still available and uh, take kind of a second to process the Dragonborn and with that killing, you two more? Kind of looking... I will stay for a drink. He goes, okay, standard uh, round of drinks coming up and she kind of steps back a little bit oh. and then heads are we over to the bar? Uh, are we potentially okay to have the drinks up in uh, one of our rooms, if that's okay? She goes back over. Uh, yes, uh, I'll send them up for you. Thank you. I'll turn to the others and go. Mine and Cloud's room. Toto's room. Where are we going? My room. My room's big enough. I mean, it might stink of dog shit and piss, but it's it's. Uh, oh yes, it's... yours is the stables. We're not going to Toto's room. <laughs> Just for a moment, are you going back to the original one that you were staying at in Central Park, or the second one? The second one that he's kind of rushed off to? I'm assuming the Central Park one. Yeah. Because we were only just round the corner from there, yeah. anyway. Yeah, okay, just double check. The other two receptionists kind of keep their heads down as soon as they see you all walk in, still kind of freaked out from the earlier events of today. Yeah. Although once the drinks are brought up to the rooms for you, when you all arrive and you're settled in, there's also a little platter sent up as well. Um, can I go to my room instead? Um, I will kind of um, be scanned to cloud just before I go kind of on, on the sly, uh, saying I'll join you in a bit. I would just nod towards you uh, in recognition. And then I'd like to go to my room and if we're taking a short rest, rolls and hit that. I assume we'd have a chat and then have some drinks and have a long rest, but cool. Cool, well, Copy goes for a short rest while everyone else is staying up for a round of drinks and discussion. The little planter set all on a table next to you again. The, three, the receptionist kind of doesn't want to look at any of you guys directly because still freaked out from beforehand. Leaves the drinks and stuff on the table and then just leaves the door, shuts behind her. How do you wish to proceed with your discussion? Well, we need a plan of action against this serial killer guy, right? What do we know? Well, he uses a some sort of shadow creature esque uh, to do his main work, but he likes to attack uh, prostitutes and well. Have they all, all just been women, or were there men as well? You would need to consult the list, which I think I'll see before I'm, I'm here, I'm back. 
Oh, I thought you were still going. Uh, you've got the list. I have. Care to take it? Um, so I will go and let us find out uh, the reason I stopped in the garden house is to grab this. And she will flick the list out. I go, this is a list of every single one of his victims that they know the name of. Um, <laughs> each of these people on this list are like me. I used to do my job. Well, this is the job I used to do. And if it wasn't for you guys, my name would be on the bottom of this list. Um, now these people are on this list because they didn't have a Cloud or a Toto or a Maka to protect them. Or a Treevy. Or a Treevy. You are correct. But now they do, and we can't protect them. But I want to find justice for them. And we do that better as a team. So I'm going to stop fucking off by myself because that just tends to get me killed. And I want us to work as a team to get these guys the justice they deserve. And I have... Yeah. I have one request when we get him. We're not killing him. We will knock him unconscious and you will leave him to me. Because I know someone that will make his last, however long he lives, as painful and torturous and horrid as he made the last few moments of these ladies and gentlemen's lives. I'm going to pipe up for a second on this one. I may not know many people in this room, if any. I sort of know this druid. But those little girls today will be in danger for as long as that man exists in this city along with countless other innocent people. So for as long as you're hunting him, you will have me with you if you wish. If not, I can leave now. That is your choice. No, having a big scaly bastard like you, heavy clad in armor, definitely might help this group a little bit. I'm not the stealthiest of people, but however I, I can take quite a few punches. That's alright, we've got stealth covered with this one and the one that disappeared. So if you are willing to help us, I'm definitely sure that we're willing to have you. Not that I speak for the whole group, but... If you all follow the same morals as this druid, who, though hiding behind a wolf and a wall, risked themselves to help a child and who he turned into a puppy, and then back again, hopefully, then I will help you. The moment you start to endanger innocent lives, that is when my blade will not longer be on your side. Oh, Sam's dying. You back, Sam? Try again, Sam. Oh, nope. he was trying. You back? Have you accidentally muted yourself? Oh, no. We seem to be having a slight technical issue. Somebody's headset may have died. Oh, no. Nah, his internet goes funny every now and then, depending on if his missus is doing something. Yep. Downloading or watching some kind of film or something. Ah. But no, you, uh, I think your, your skills can definitely be of use. Okay then, I will stick around for now. I don't do well with orders, by the way. Never have, never will. I think that goes for all of us, I'm pretty sure. Suggestions are your best. As long as it works both ways. 
I don't believe in a commanding officer. <laughs> Never ends <laughs> well. That's fair enough, as long as that doesn't stretch to the point of putting people at risk. The to, only reason uh, you'll ever be at risk is if you can defend yourself and someone else can't. Well, that probably means I'll never be at risk, because as I've learned recently, I can't fucking defend myself. Then stand behind the scaly wall. Um, I wonder if I... Oh, Sam, are you back? Am I back? Yay! Yay! Welcome. We'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> Um, I am wondering if our best bet to find him, so, uh, I sent him a message today and he received it because he responded. I am wondering if our best bet to find him is to use me as potential bait. He already Whoa. doesn't like me, already has a target on me. We have other people with disguised spells, right? Somebody that maybe, in our events, a little bit, you know, could take a little bit more of a beating. I'm not talking about facing him by myself. I'm talking about persuading him to come meet me, what he thinks will be me by myself, but ambush. But the question is, he definitely smart enough to get away with all this killing of these people, but. Do you think he's foolish enough to come when you ask? Um, I don't know if he is clever enough to get away with all of this. I was uh, speaking to a source of mine in the city today to find out as much as I could about him, and I showed him this, and I dropped the my sketchbook with the very, very detailed picture of Jackson with his mask on. It's like looking at a photograph. Um, only it's not a photograph because we're in Haldoria, not the UK. <laughs> um, and using that, he managed to find out that this gentleman used to be a guard in the prison before Fordak hit. And when Fordak hit, he disappeared. Everyone's assumed he's dead. So maybe the fact that he's getting away with it isn't the fact that he's clever or sneaky, it's the fact that no one thinks he exists. That and when you challenge a coward, this man's honour, he will usually respond. And this man is definitely a coward to be striking at women. He doesn't strike at women, he strikes at people that he thinks are less than him. And he's decided that people that sell their body for cash or for gold are beneath him, are less than human, which is a thought most people have, to be fair, but most of them don't act upon it. I would point out that if you've read the list, well, uh, escorts and that do make the majority of the list. There are others on it. Just as a little side note, just to kind of like, yeah, he's he's got a certain demographic he goes after. Though there is fringe members who were also on the list as well. I've still not put my glasses on, so I can't read the list. The problem we're going to have is the same problem we had with the last fight, is that once he splits and that shadow appears, we need to we need to sub either stop him from running away and then kill the shadow, or he's just going to get away again. Could you not mark him like you normally do with things you're targeting? Would that not track him for you? For a mile, yeah. How good is your dog at hunting? We try not to bring the dog into battle. Wouldn't be in battle just as a tracking hound. I'm pretty sure she could do fairly well. 
She managed to find us from whatever scent she picked up from somewhere. So all you would need is a piece of his clothing. Which we already have. A tiny piece that we've held on to. I don't know if we'd uh, get much of a scent from it. We can try. I mean, if it comes to it, I can just throw the iron bands at him and then we fight the shadow. He doesn't look that strong. I also have the spell that stops people moving. That could work That's as well. That is a good shout. That's true, but I think your talents will be more needed for uh, your counter spell, especially with that circle he threw up a couple of times. But... I can do that while maintaining uh, focus on the spell that keeps him held. If we can subdue this guy, if we put all our effort into subduing him before we even st start making some decent headway on the shadow, then we can stop this happening again and again and again. Otherwise, every time we fight him, he's just going to escape and do it again. I wonder if by subduing him, we will stop him summoning his shadow. I'm wondering if that's a spell. That's a good point. Needs to be quick. He summoned it pretty fast last time. Mm -hmm. Yes, I I'm quite good at. Sorry, Trevi, you were saying. No, I just thought I'm quite good at um, stopping magic from happening. We've got plenty of options. Worst comes to worst, he summons it, and then we have to make the choice. So, oh. hopefully, uh, Irat, if was it? Mm-hmm. If you're definitely up for this, if you, if this shadow creature does come forth, uh, I'd... I'll fill you in on exactly what it can, well, what we've seen it do, but if you can, t in a way, take the hits from it and keep it busy while others hit it from the sides, I should be able to subdue uh, Jackson. I have no problem with taking the hits. That's what I do. I take the hits and deal them back. I have no problem. As long as I can punch it, I'm okay with that. I use a weapon rather than your fists. Punching it seems yeah. ineffective. Yeah, I would. I would probably use my favorite weapon. I will warn you: this creature has a pair of daggers. Uh, one takes. Uh, one will injure you to the point where magic does not heal the injury, and one will. Hit it wound you and drain your life essence through revitalizing itself um, so definitely two means you have to watch out for if i must fall to keep other people alive who are innocent and cannot defend themselves and so be it i've already suffered massive injuries from not following my own code well Just hopefully it won't come to that So when are we going to call this fall out? Well, I think we all need to sleep tonight because I know mm -hmm. a lot of us from the tentacle-faced weirdos f attacking us are fairly tapped. So I would suggest we sleep tonight and we try and get in contact with him tomorrow. That is up for everybody else. I'm fine. Fine. I think 
something that works. Uh, I know Trevi and Erat do not have a room here. I will, uh, I will go and speak to the barmaids and see if they have rooms spare. Trevi, do you sleep indoors or do you sleep outdoors like me? I don't sleep an awful lot, but wherever really. Well, if you're happy to, you can share. I'm assuming Toto is offering you offering to share the stable with you and Clover. Oh yeah, if there's an animal involved, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I sleep with the wolf. Perfect. Okay, so I will go and find out if there is a room free fair at. Thank you very much. You are welcome. I will be right back and I'll walk downstairs to speak to the barmaids and see if there's a room free. Unless Adria's staying the night, then I'll, then I'll have Oh yeah, room. I forgot about Adria. No, look at Adria. What are you saying, baby? <laughs> She's kind of sitting just at the back, just kind of quietly t listening to mm -hmm. you all plot a demise of this serial killer. And she's gonna, like, well, I don't really feel comfortable walking home. And you're gonna look out at how dark it is suddenly, and just like, I mean, if it's not too much trouble, and you're gonna just pull the hair back a little bit. We'll take the honeymoon suite. She watches a little bit, it's like, mm -hmm. just for comfort, for comfort. I don't trust this rapscallion. I'll, I'll call out as I go downstairs. You could always share with Elizabeth if you wanted to, Adria. Or me in the stable. Or, yeah, these two in the stable. Or you can take my room and I will share in the honeymoon suite. Oh my god. Or I can find out if there is two rooms free. That's no problem either. Sorry, at the risk of breaking the game here, the last time a Black Dragon entered the honeymoon suite, Someone couldn't walk for a week. Was it the bard? <laughs> no. <laughs> These, I've been I've been working on this chick for ages. This dragon ball is walking in, just <laughs> stepping on my game. <laughs> you do not know how many failed rolls it took to get this far. <laughs> and you talk about Wingman. He had a whole squadron trying to help him out here. Yeah. Dragon Balls walked in ruin the whole thing. It's up to you, Andrea, whatever you want. I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, make me a persuasion check, please. With advantage, because you've got all your kind of squadron helping you here. Elspeth isn't helping, Elspeth's offering her a way out. <laughs> so, I mean, moral support, not actual support. Oh god damn it! <laughs> what is your charisma modifier? Uh, not modifier, the actual score. Zero. No, the actual. Uh, yeah, like 10, 11. Oh, 11. She kind of looks at you, winces a little bit, and goes, mm, No, I think I'll. I'm just going to sidestep. So, not like that pure, like, or like, Screw you kind of way, but more like a, it's a bit much. Too much too soon, I get it. It's cool. I'll see you in the morning. It's fine. Like, it's fine. I mean, and she kind of looks at it and she's kind of got like this kind of blood stains on her hands. Like, yeah, as you know, that image alone is kind of making me a little bit. Yeah, I think we should put a pin in it. Yep, fine. Um, just like, yep. Kind of... No, no, no. No, no, need to explain. no need to explain. It's fine. It's fine. I'm going to cast a message to Toto and go, calm down. You are going to chase her away. Just give her a bit of space and deep breaths. Toto just gives a thumbs up. And I will walk down the stairs to get rooms for both Eret and Adria. Cool. You walk down the stairs. Again, the triplets have all swapped places, and you see 
Terry's on break, just sitting with a tankard in front of him, just going over recipe books. The violinist just kind of slowly playing on the little uh, makeshift stage that the uh, Central Park's in has. I'll enjoy the music for like two seconds and then go and speak to the bar. Yeah, the barmaids. Uh, we are, is there a potential for two extra rooms for tonight at least? Was, uh, yeah, we just had a couple of people check out, so I don't see why we can't. Perfect. Um, just add them to the, the running tab we've got going and I'll pay it once we leave, if that's okay. It was no problem, ma'am. Again, she's trying to avoid eye contact and just follow the paperwork for you. Would you like anything else sent to the rooms? No, I think that's everything for this evening. Thank you, though. And I will mm, just squiggle something on the paperwork. Okay, so I'll hand over the paperwork. That's two extra rooms for you for this evening, at least. The rooms are only down the hall from the rest of you, so there's like, oh, like a room gap in between. Perfect, I'll run up and give them each their key to their room. Yep. You return upstairs. Give the keys over to the rest of the party members. And would you like to take the long night's rest? Mm-hmm. Anyone yep. didn't want to do anything before? Mm -hmm. And um, go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say I would do something during the long rest. So if you want to go, oh, um, after about an hour because uh, she's just trying to work out kind of her coordination and everything once again, just kind of basically recover a little bit she's going to come out and if they're still having a chat then kind of join in the chat and kind of listening in uh but if they're kind of finished and everything she's going to go and knock on um cloud's door just have a quick chat with them i uh no 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 I know you said about doing something this evening but uh after everything uh i I think we'll be all right for a little bit. No? Um, she'll message back saying, um, no, not about that. I uh, I needed to recover a little bit, so I missed everything you spoke about. Can you give me a quick summary of everything we're doing? Uh, we're going to try and bait the uh, this Jackson into a trap, um, and hopefully if we can subdue him before he can bring forth that shadow creature he uses uh brilliant if not we will have to take it on but uh elizabeth wishes for him to be captured alive so uh, fun and games but uh we've got the aid of uh trevi and uh Irat, so a little bit more muscle and Leaf, I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah. Uh, this Jackson is the guy from that night, the one that almost killed Elspeth. Correct. Okay. Um, I will see you in the morning. You shall. Sleep well. Can I ask, were you two having that conversation in the doorway? Uh, I would have been using Thieves Cant. I don't know whether Cloud would have been responding in common or not. Either way, Cloud is stood in the doorway of our room, just either staring outside, moving his hands, or having a one-sided conversation. Elspeth is sitting on the bed thinking, 
yeah. what the fuck is going on at this point yeah, in time. Very much. Very likely, very likely. Um, after that chat, she'll walk away, go to her room. But uh, Elizabeth is getting a bit stranger. But hmm. is stranger possible? With us, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I did wonder what you would do and stood at the door. Yeah, you know, I'm a special kind of person. I thought my craziness was rubbing off on you. It's good to know it's not. <laughs> I've got all my own, thank you. <laughs> uh, Elspeth is going to have her magic threads out, or <coughs> threads that she's trying to trying to make magic. Uh, she's going to have another two of those trying to make them magic during the evening. And Cloud will rest until Elizabeth goes into her meditation, her four hour of meditation sleep. And after about an hour she enters that, Cloud is going to sneak out of the room. Cool, let me a stealth check. Do you want me to make a perception check as well? Because technically I'm not asleep. Yes. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get advantage from? With a 24, that's going to be uh, doozy. Boots, boots of Elvish can give me advantage. Oh, yep, that's it. Yeah, got that. Ah, damn it. Oh well. Over that 20, I don't think you were going to beat that anyway, no. so... Valiant effort. You stir a little, but then go back into your trance as... Cloud does the whole... Are you doing the whole open window and just kind of, like, meow out? Or... Pretty much, yeah. Uh, I can climb... I've got climbing speed, so I can go straight out the window. Cool. And as we're... At the um, lower end tavern, I will slip round the corner to the little park that's nearby, and I will go sit by one of the trees and summon the blade staff in my lap, and I will... Cloud's not exactly sure what to do, but he's seen Elspeth meditate, so he's going to try that with the blade staff on his lap. And just sort of have a hand on his scar as well, while just sort of concentrating and wondering, such for about an hour or two. You sit there for the majority of the time thinking, this isn't going to work. What the fuck am I doing? Damn, it's cold. Until that sort of feeling of the growing in the chest starts to move underneath the skin your eyes open ever so slightly you can see the outline of the uh, the park all the trees that seem still a moment ago just seem to kind of draw so with no wind just a little bit of movement on the island and you get the strange sensation that where the wind is in the chest, it's kind of formed a small sort of almost teardrop-like shape. And this otherworldly voice kind of goes, uh, just reaches through from somewhere out of reach, just like, Grow stronger, my son. To spread like my my roots ever so deep, and for your bravery, take this. And you can just feel that teardrop shape just kind of harden up a little bit on your chest. I shall call on you, not so far. And the voice kind of just tails off. You're going to jostle awake, realising that the last 
however many moments were all in the mind until you draw your hand across your chest and realise that that teardrop shape has in fact appeared. Reach in my shirt and pop, have a look at it. It looks like uh, like the root, like the bottom part of a tree stump has now just started slowly forming on the like the chest, protruding from where the fur would normally be. It's kind of receded back. And you feel strange. You can't quite put the uh, feeling on it, but it feels like there's like you've grown in a way that you're not quite sure of. Okay, Cloud will probably just sit there for a little bit longer, just contemplating exactly what the hell is going on before he might realise what, how long he's been there and shoot him back to the town. How long has he been gone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been gone for about an hour and a half, two hours. Damn it, she's still asleep. So you have to make a stealth check to get back in. Mm -hmm. Yep. When Cloud eventually returns. <laughs> Just beats it this time. As he's opening the window, slip it back in. Ever so gently putting the window down. Turns around and Elspeth's eyes are shoot open. She'll probably also leap to the other side of the bed, thinking there's someone trying to get into her room, their room, that isn't Cloud. God damn it, sorry to wake you, Mana. You can wake me any time, although I'd prefer it not being you sneaking back into the room after I assume you've sneaked out. You don't need to... You don't need to sneak out. You could have said, I need time, and I would have either left, or you could have gone. It is, um... Something you don't want to talk about, which is fine. You are allowed. It's more something I don't quite understand yet. Again, absolutely fine. If you feel you need to... Share or not share, that is completely up to you. Please do not sneak out. Not while there is a mass murderer trying to get us all. If something had happened and none of us had known where you'd gone, just please at least let one of us know that you're leaving, even if it's not me. Let Toto or someone know that you're leaving. I understand. I weren't too far. I could always communicate with you. Anyway, you should probably be getting back to sleep for us. You'll end up exhausted in the morning. True. Um, yeah, Cloud will head to sleep. Um, could I do something else, something quite small? Um, I recall having bought kind of like a whistle or like find familiar or something like that. Um, I think around the same time Toto did, uh, I forget whether it was in Western. Um, I want to try using that to summon a familiar. We'll try that the following day. Okay. Okay, so morning comes, everyone's had their long rest. When you choose to convene in the morning, He's convening in someone's room or are you going downstairs? I assume we'll go downstairs. Yeah, head downstairs, get breakfast. 
Terry knows my order. <laughs> Here we go again. Begrudgingly, he prepares your order. Does anyone else want to order anything before the usual chaos for this? I'm going to order something to take out to Clover. So I'll have a standard meal. Same. <laughs> Mm. Same. Gonna order some fruit. Cool. Oh, I think it's like a gold piece between these all because the staff want to kind of make amends as you all kind of pull in for the costs. Uh, Cloud's got it. Elspeth gets a little uh, tray of appropriate little meat selection for Clover when she goes out to the stables. You do notice that it looks like Clover had a really rough, a rough night's sleep. And that there's like scratch marks on the stable, just didn't look like she was very comfortable this uh, this evening. I'm going to sit with her for a while and I'll actually uh, call to Send message to both Toto and Tree. <laughs> um, I believe you two are out here with Clover. Did anything happen in the night? She seems to have not slept. Did anything happen in the night? You heard her just kind of like being restless and the occasional kind of like scratching on wood that you presume it's probably because just a rough night's sleep. Yeah, I just think she just had a bad night's sleep. That's all. She had a busy... Can I do some kind of check on her to make sure she's okay? Make sure there's nothing, I don't know, magically affecting her? Make an insight check. Probably just misses you, uh, missed you all and kind of had rough night's sleep after chasing after potential bad guys and trying to find Cloud and realising there was a lot going on. Um, Nothing at the ordinary, just the usual owner stroke companion going, oh, she's concerned as all well, kind of worried you, but you're sure it's fine. I'll just sit with her for a little bit. Cool. Anyone else do anything in the morning? No, just put all my armor back on and sit with a weight stone and sharpen the sword. Um, I'm trying my best to hide from everyone whether I can eat or not. I'll kind of look away every time I'm taking a sip or something. You notice that your hand trembles a little bit when you're getting like the spoon to your mouth or try to drink something. Yeah. And you're still finding the fact that you have to use the hand reel to get down up and down the stairs. It's still going to take you a little bit of time to adjust to. Sure. That's everything for me. Cool. Okay. He's have breakfast. He's all just having a pleasant morning. There's a couple of patrons who are either checking in or checking out. I will quickly, once I come back inside, uh, pop over to the barmaids and ask, uh, do you happen to know, have you heard if that horrible man that's going around murdering people, did he 
attack anyone last night, or was it quiet on that front? They all kind of almost answer yes, and there's a we've not heard anything. Okay, I'll go sit with the others then. Okay, so what's the plan of attack for today? I think we need to find a locate best location for what we plan to do. What do we need? Do we need space or do we need to get them somewhere, you know, tight or... Somewhere or... away from people. Potentially a dead end of some kind so he can't run off. We want him contained but I think we also need a bit of space to manoeuvre just in case. Uh, that circle that he cast last time was pretty large and uh, we don't want to be all bunched up again. Some kind of carriage storage area might be a good idea. At night it's not very populated and you'll also find very few people there. It's also probably a large wooden area with very few exits. Large warehouse would work quite well. Yeah, that is, it, that's a good shout, except for um, uh, we just got to be careful with the wood because we have, uh, and I'll point at Maka, a lot of fire, and then I'll point at Trevi and a lot of lightning. Um, just, I, I don't want to risk that sort of like casual hand wave of like trails of f flame going up in between the fingers. A building does not count as a casualty. That's fair enough. However, <laughs> we would if we're... Oh, after you. But a building that catches light to other buildings with people in it does. And also, mm -hmm. if we are inside the building when it catches a light, we might also then be casualties. I'm fine being a casualty. Um, I'll drop Toto a message. Um, ask this out loud. But if we're dealing with a shadow, should we not try to do it in daylight as opposed to somewhere where there is darkness or shadows? Toto will try to seem more intelligent because uh, he feels like um, that Elizabeth's more intelligent than he is. Well, if we're dealing with something that's a shadow, surely daytime's the best time to attack, am I right? This is true, but <clears throat> I would assume he would know this as well and probably wouldn't fall for that sort of trick. It's a possible try. You're right, it's a stupid idea. I'll message him again saying, but... He's missed out on one target. Surely he wants to complete the job. So if Elspeth is going to be the bait, surely he'll take it if he's desperate. Well, on second thoughts, if he's already missed his target and Elspeth is his target, he's going to want to f complete the job. You know what I mean? I still don't think he'd risk coming out during the day. Everyone thinks he's dead if his face is seen during the day. Well, no, he yeah, isn't. you're right. Yeah, you know, you're right. Yeah, no, stupid idea. What if we go sort of sunset time? Meet in the middle. We can see what we can get him to agree to. Uh, I am going to send a <coughs> message to Cloud and go, this is going to sound very odd. But I have the feeling I'm being watched right now. Trying not to make a big deal, but there are eyes upon me, and I do not know where from. Mm. Uh, Cloud will um, certainly have a look around the room as he sort of takes his dish back. 
to the kitchen area or wherever. Um, well, he'll put his hand up for um, one of the waitresses to come and collect his dish. And as he does, he can have he'll have a little look around. Need me a perception check. Could I potentially assist with this? I sent a message to Cloud. You don't have no idea what he's doing. Yeah, no, but like general observation. Uh, nope. From okay. Twenty-three. You're looking about. There is one figure at the back of the bar who came in kind of subtly and is only just sitting there with his hat over his eyes. Yeah. Seems to be looking in your kind of general direction. He's kind of smirking underneath his hat. Wide brimmed, kind of almost uh, 10 gallon kind of style hat, just to point out. How does he smell? <laughs> you take a. Good way for me. I suppose a bit like bourbon and. Well, about a whiff of bourbon, just like it was a bit early to start drinking, but okay. And that's the only kind of whiff you got from the numerous other aromas in this place. Would I be able to make a check to see if the eyes I felt upon me were arcane eyes? <laughs> you making an arcana check? Oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that. Do it again. Okay. You've used the spell itself before, or at least been in proximity to someone who has? Scrying, I assume. Scrying, yeah. If you hadn't, I wouldn't have given it for 15, but since you already had, I was like, mm, yeah, you're kind of familiar with this already, so yeah. Uh, someone was scrying on you while she were at the table. So I will just say that out loud. I will go, someone is scrying on me, or was scrying on me. The fact that I know they're doing it mean they didn't manage it this time, but that doesn't mean they haven't done it previously. Well, that gives us a location to head to. We know he what where he uses a scrying orb. Potentially, but he could own his own and have his own spell. Possibly, but there would be no reason to use a scrying orb, and would there? True. Good point. Uh, to clarify for those that weren't with us, uh, Gilmore's Glorious Goods has a crystal ball that they rent out for scrying. We used it, that's how we found Jackson. And we now have a feeling that he's using it to, or someone is using it to find me. A company that does rentals usually keeps a receipt record. Don't know if Gilmore's quite works that way, but he does know of him. So if it was him at the counter this morning, he'll know <laughs> who I'm talking about. And he'll be able to tell us if he was in. It also means that we know he's still very much interested in you. I'm not sure if I'm comforted by that thought or terrified by that thought, to be fair. Be comforted by the fact you're surrounded by people that will not allow harm. True. And be more comforted by the fact that he may be targeted upon you, but he has to get through us first, and we want him to try that. At this point, Elspeth probably slipped her hand into clouds. She's a little bit nervous, but 
other than that, she is a mask like she doesn't have a care in the world. Cloud holds your hand and just says telepath uh, telepathically, uh, as, don't worry, we work just as hard as you do to keep us all alive. I'm aware. Just the thought of him looking in on me. I don't know how many times he's done it, but I'm not aware of. It's just unsettling. Um, can I drop to another message saying, um, I don't know whether you discussed this already, but does it need to be Elspeth? Can it be someone else who can look like her? I'll send one back. Um, I'm not sure if it matters, but I can bring it up to the group. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, does it ha does it kind of have to be you? Can we kind of bait them out by somebody else looking like you? Like if you send them a message saying to meet you and we disguise somebody else as you type of deal. My concern is if he's scrying on me, if I arrange to meet him and he decides to turn up late and scry to make sure it's me there. If he scries and I'm not at the meeting place, he'll know. Yeah. Well, like we said, like, surely he needs a scrying orb, right? Because we saw him use one. Unless he was just saving spells. We shall see. Maybe our first port of call should be Gilmore's. Is everyone ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. I'll nod. I'm ready to travel. Well then, let's go. Did Adria come down for breakfast? That's a good point. I keep forgetting she's here. <laughs> She slept in, but she's making her way down. Oh, uh, when when she comes down, I'll say, yeah, we're uh, we're still on the on the trail for this guy. It's I'm not going to tell you what to do. You, you you're more than welcome to come with us, or you know, if you have to get to work or whatever, that's fine. Yeah, things are over for a second. Is I. Th I think a little bit of time at the Emerald Heart would probably be better for me. I could keep tabs on some of the girls that are work and guys that are working out on the streets. Well, not in the streets. You, you know, I mean, people talk. So, and she kind of fumbles her way through, basically saying that she's going back there just to keep an, an ear to the ground. Okay. Uh, you know what? That's probably a good idea. Have you got any way? That you can, I know some of these guys can kind of send messages to each other. Do you have any way to do that? You could kind of let me know if any, anything goes down. I'll find a way. All right. Stay safe. Stay safe. She gives you like a half hug and then waves to everyone as she walks out. Bye. Bye, Adria. Be careful going home. And I turn to Toto and say, I kind of whisper, but very loudly, Who was that? Good to the point that even the bourbon smelling fell out the back of the room, even when it goes, <laughs> subtle. Um, you cut off there. Could you repeat what you said? The Guy laughs and goes, no, so no, not no you, uh, Foss. He cut off there for a little right to be the thing. I didn't say anything. You mean, Dom. Dom. yeah, oh, oh, I said, I, said, I, I whispered, whispered, who was that? Oh, sorry, but not really whisper. I like stage whisper, you're like, <clears throat> who's that? Kind of not realizing that the you're voice carried over that my little elven friend is my future wife onwards 
I'm gonna go grab Clover. Clover's coming with us. You go out, okay. and Clover's... Looking like she's had a bit of a rough night, but still... Still there, and present, and willing to go. Come on, sweetheart, come with us. We could use your nose in case he gets away. And I'll pet her and lead her away. Cool. You lead her out. Everybody all meeting outside the, the Central Park Inn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then your destination would be Gilmore's to see if you can make heads or tails of what's going on here. That is correct. Cool. You make your way to Gilmore's. Again, outside, he's got the projection illusion of himself going, Welcome to Gilmore's Glorious Goods, where for all your magical needs, just like plays every time someone walks by it to the point there's like, I did the park bench, they might go in, I swear if that thing goes off one more fucking time, I'll break it. And goes back to whatever he's doing. He's going. The usual flamboyantly uh, done boy himself is behind the main till, just like, ah, hello, my friends. And I see you've brought more fabulous people with you. And he kind of just returns to his standing posture, fixes himself. How might I help you today? Um, we were hoping to ask, um, has anybody used your scrying orb, uh, this morning? This morning? Uh, not to my recollection. He goes through his ledger, just like, sort of, over the top, sort of like, at the end of the finger, flicking through the book, just like, no, I don't think anyone has this one. Why would you ask? Because someone has been scrying upon me and we wondered if potentially it was someone using your orb to do it. You look just taking back my gun. Well, I can assure you, my dear, that orb is only for missing persons and such things only. It's not used for peeping toms. You know, also, I might must believe me, we've had issues with that recently, and it's made me question the whole renting this damn thing out, but I can assure you, no one has been using it this morning to do any such thing. Do you happen to have any competitors that are offering the same service, maybe with less regulations? Hmm, and he kind of just let us the whole look like, from his, uh, his goatee for a moment and just... No one who I think would be stupid enough to do so, but you never know these days when anyone trying to make the name out here. Especially against me, he kind of just does that sort of flamboyant hair flip. But... Truly, I would not have anyone know who would, one, have one of these orbs and, two, freely use it or allow other folk to use it without a hefty price. Without hefty price? Well, they're not a cheap item. Uh, it's not a cheap item to have lying around. Would you know of a way to track back? Is there any way to, for me to use the little bit of trace I got to know someone was doing it to be able to track it back to see who it was? Anyone double second this out again to double check the screen? Mm. 
I don't really know if you'll be able to be aware of it. Normally, if you become aware, you could see the, the little sensory object watching you, but other than that, I'm not really sure where, how you would trace it back. I've been trying to figure it out myself in my spare time, but unfortunately, by the way, I can't help. Sorry. It's no problem. You're more helpful than not knowing would have been, so thank you very much. Does anyone have anything else they want to do in Gilmore before we vacate? Do you know anyone that would sell such an item? Again, a hefty price, I know, but do you know anyone that would sell one to a private collector? Hmm. Well, it has been known that there have been recent, there's been a couple sold on the black market a couple of times in my, that I've been made aware of. Fortunately, I managed to get a hold of some of them pretty quick, and I do manage to get recover the losses, but. Uh, it's not out with the realm of possibility that a couple of them still managed to slip the net. Okay, thank you. Says you're welcome, my draconic companion. He gives you that slight wink. <sighs> he just kind of side eyes at Elspeth and goes, What can I say? I like the bad boys. <laughs> I know and you're looking at the wrong one. I know the feeling. I'm sorry I can't be any more used to you. If you know of any other services that I can probably help you with, please feel free to stop by Gilmore's Glorious Goods once more. Until one, then... Well, I've got one request before we leave. Have you got any shoes? Because mine have gone missing. And I have put an order in for shoes. I remember young Kai saying something about those one moment, sir, and just kind of was in the pose up this really bizarre looking box. The side that crossed the counter and goes, I believe this order was just finished. Oh, you know, I open the box real slow, look inside. Give me a second while I scroll back a second. I'm pretty sure someone already beat me to the punch with these. Is it the pogo stick shoes? The yeah, stilt pretty. shoes. <laughs> well, pogo stick shoes, and they also have the ability to uh, ski. Basically, inspect the gadget boots pretty much is like really look, but they look like clogs. It's really giving the bizarre look because of it. No, these are just the test fitting ones Kai's assured me of, but if they are to your liking, you can style the shoes to whatever you like. I think they're perfect. I think they're perfect just the way they are. No, small disclaimer, we do not take any responsibilities or refunds for any injuries you sustain due to any strenuous activities involving these shoes. Have a nice day, Mr. Dodo. Oh, these are perfect. I'm going to put them on, just wiggle my toes around in them. And then <laughs> get bust the stilts out. Okay, we'll see for the next show, sort of like, first time you try them on, and put the stilts the extend a good 20 foot high and you almost hit the ceiling the shot's been like modified so that the ceiling is a bit higher up so there's like a second tier above it and you just like shoot straight up oh shit it's high up here boys Maka just sits in the background I know you like to get high but this is taking the piss I'm high as a motherfucker right now and then I'll just unextend them back to the floor. You lose ten back down. I love them. Oh, uh, Mr. Cloud. Uh, Kai did mention something about a cloak almost being finished for you. He'll, he'll 
after the audio the last few days, he's a little bit worn out. Yeah, that's uh, completely understandable. Uh, as long as he's doing well, uh, that's the best thing. And obviously, give him a kick up the ass if he starts misbehaving again, but I'm sure you've got that under control. Oh, I'll put him back in lane. Don't worry about it. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, we'll definitely be seeing you around. I'll so, quit wink fingers. I'll be seeing you first. You can try. <laughs> and uh, Clara will start heading out and say to the group, uh, So, shall we find a secluded area to hatch this little plan? Uh, just on the way out of Gilmore's, I'll kind of hang back and try and go last and go, just if you think of anything else or come across anything else that will help, keep me alive, Gilmore, please. Let me know. And then I'll walk out the door. There's no one's issues. Exit is shot. And then would I know of any warehousey type places that we'd be able to do this in your best bet off the top of your head would be somewhere in the docks there's a couple of uh, other areas that are relatively disused and kind of in a way of can't see the forest from the trees as big as the port of Amon is, there are areas of it that kind of just like slip, easily slip under the radar. Mm -hmm. So I will pass that along and go. Also, there is the option of places underground. I know obviously that's the haunt of both legal sides of the city, but there are places down there that could fit the bill as well. Uh... I'm a little bit skeptical about underground though in that um Vincent's in the city. I don't want to get caught in between the two of them. You know what I mean? He likes to hang out in caves and shit, doesn't he? I don't really know about that guy. He I can't quite work him out. Definitely uh powerful and a bit uh, disturbing. Oh yes, Trevi and Arat. Um, Vincent is the other one that has us on his hit list. Uh, some wacky magic user from Western who, I don't know, likes fucking around with us. I don't think he's actually done anything to hurt any of us other than be a weirdo asshole. But he got uh, gallon killed. He did killed. get gallon killed. So yes, he has managed to kill one of us, and since then he's just liked playing shitty pranks on us. You have some very odd people after you. One of us. Mm. It makes sense. Uh, we could generally deal with normal people. You have a sociopath and a prankster. At least we got rid of the mind flyer. And there was um, the dragon. A mind flyer and a dragon. And the gif. And the gif. And the myriad members. <laughs> Don't forget there might also be a dragon in this city. True. Well, that's also the other option we can go deal with. I'll message Toto saying... Um... Nope, I won't message it because I don't think coffee would have been part of that. A dragon! 
Okay. This is the kind of nonsense we get into. Uh, we've been hanging around together for what is it now? About two months. You've done all this in two months. Hmm. Well, we've known each other our time for about two, two and a half months. But technically, we've been together for I think five or six. Yes. Because we did miss out like three months. We did. Yeah, in the astro day, yeah. You boys still need to plan your fishing trip to the Astral Sea. That's where these fuckers are dead. It's the first place we're going. Hell yeah. Right. Fine. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Well, you haven't been to the Astral Sea? Ah, oh, it's, it's fucking terrible. It, it, it's great. Mm -hmm. I think the worst place I've probably been is battlefields and ground war grounds. Oh yes, there's also a succubus after us. Well, after me, I would assume now. But we <laughs> killed her. True, we did. You have all the fun companions in this world, don't you? That's fine. This seems like an interesting. Interesting people to be around for a while. You don't get many friends when you're this. Just gestures to all of himself. Oh, the judgment of people. Well, when they see large, black scales, tail, they tend to turn around and walk the other way. I can imagine. More surprised well, you didn't run. Most of that comment pretty much relates to me, but instead of scales, to change it for fur, but yeah. Um, I suppose we have the same problems. If you would like to have tried being the only elf person in the city a hundred and hundred and fifty years ago, that was a fun experience. Not. It seems we all have similar issues. Hmm. We do. Did you, you seem to have more of them. <laughs> well, we can kill your problems one at a time. Yes. And maybe we can return the favour. And I have a lot more to kill. Trust. <laughs> but yes, shall we go hunting for a empty warehouse? Indeed. Mm, a nice battleground. The question is, as we walk, do I start <clears throat> winding him up now? Or do I wait? Well, you have to remember, you don't want to waste too many spells. Messages. You don't want him to, you don't want him to scry on us just now as well. True, good point. But message is not... Uh... A spell that takes up any of my potential for the day. When you scry, do you just see the thing that you're looking at, or do you also see its surroundings a bit? You also see its surroundings a bit. So yeah, we don't want to want us to be near you when if he and when he does. Uh, scry. To be fair, he doesn't know who I am. Mm, true, but if she seems to be alone, it'll be more convincing to get him out. Um, I have a very peculiar idea for you. I also potentially have an idea, but you go first. He is a man that likes to finish what he starts, correct? As far as we're aware. What if someone robs him of his prize? That is also a fair idea. My idea was he seems very fixated on the fact that I haven't changed. And he still thinks that I do what I do, even though I told him I did not. I wonder if 
showing him that he is right and that I have not changed will uh, wind him up to the point of getting him out. Both are options that may push him over the edge and make him make a mistake. Hmm. However, both put you in a compromising position. I've spent most of my life in a compromising position. Let's be fair. Yeah. Hey <laughs> And she'll but get she will giggle. You see how many pages to the Karma Sutra as I would have managed to get through. Hmm. She's hundred and sixty years old, probably all of them. <laughs> there has been new chapters added. <laughs> she will giggle to show that that is kind of what she's implying there. The choice is yours. You're the one that is risking an idiot with a knife. Well, he's already tried it once. I doubt he'll... Uh, if he tries it again, I'm a little bit more prepared for it this time. So... And you guys will be a lot closer than you were last time he got me. And I will pull up my shirt to show you the scar from the last time he almost killed me. The advantage we would have doing it this way is that he would not be thinking straight. A good tactic in war is to aggravate your opponent to the point if they make a mistake. Hmm. I'm pretty good at uh, winding people up to the uh, point where they're not thinking straight. Aren't I, dear? Winking at Cloud. She definitely has a way with her words. I can definitely guarantee that. The decision is yours. I am only a guest in your group. We shall see. Let us find our battleground first, and then we will decide on best course of action. So you all make your way to the dockyards and come on. Takes you a little while to get there, but once you get there, you see the vast port ahead of you. The main harbour itself is buzzing with activity. Um, a few choice spots you could probably uh, find a disused warehouse or such. One that immediately comes to mind that the group have already experienced was the one where the Orbit Dragon kind was found. That would it's a good size one. It's not a bad idea. It was sort of set out the way from the main hustle and bustle. If I'm correct, it's got enough room for me to fly. It's got a roof section that you can fly down from. It's not a bad shout. But realistically, you don't need a roof section anymore. You got your stilts. Oh, yeah. I'd be okay. I'd be okay with it if everyone else was. I'm okay with it. Open enough that he may not think to look around too much, but closed enough that you guys can hide roof in easy reaching distance. Yeah, uh, this place will do then. Uh, maybe we should move it around to the best. Put things in a locate, lay things out in a more our advantage look layout. Let's home it. alone this. Pretty much. Should should we set it up now and then try and call him out now? If we're lucky, you might just come now. If we can get him to come, he more than likely won't come until evening time, but it just depends on how heavily you 
lady insults on. Just smiling at Elzebeth. Who says I'm going to be insulting him? Can you cast message and vicious mockery at the same time? Because that would be incredible. Uh, one has a much smaller range than the other, so unfortunately not. Can you just put vicious mockery into a message spell? Just like, that's what, that's what I mean. I will what? work on it, but at the moment, no. I'd be trolling so hard. Oh uh, yeah, I want to set up like a vantage point where I can just kind of just be a sniper. Um, so I understand. Are we doing this inside the building, or are we doing it like an outside the building? I would presume they're trying to do it inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're doing it inside, then I too will try to set up like a vantage point, like a sniper. If we kind of set one up on each side, then I've got one side, Elizabeth's got the other, we've got, uh, you know, two long range spots. Um, could I, I'm going to quickly drop Toto a quick message as well saying, it's dangerous, but if he starts casting too many spells, I can shut him down. But I'll need everyone to then jump him at that point. The difficulty is that it's, it's going to be him and then it's going to be the shadow. But if he uses magic to summon the shadow, I can shut his magic down. That's That's the plan, hopefully. That's what we want to do. Any sign of him casting that shadow and we're all just going to have to just jump on him. Just whatever, okay. whatever can stop that spell being cast. Um, so I'll, I'll try to set up like an eagle's nest, but um, a bit like Hawkeye from Avengers, like make it easy for me to just kind of come straight down if necessary without kind of taking falling damage. So like maybe have like a rope there or something that I can kind of just slide down if necessary okay give me a second and i'll get you the little layout for you to work with thank you going to rehand this shit again because i never anticipate what you guys are going to do Not gonna lie that your free hands are pretty solid. Like you're drawing straight lines. I won't be able to draw straight lines with the mouse. Not as easy as it looks. It's very yeah, they they look the better than the ones I draw by hand on like a final one. Minus shit. X marks the spot, there's treasure, boys. <laughs> hey, give me treasure! Go for a dive if you wish, see what you find. Yeah, you guys can go diving, I'm wearing chainmail, I will drown. I don't think that I can swim. Oh, we'll have to fix that. Elspeth loves the water. Beach episode. <clears throat> hey, I'm hoping some some time when we go wandering from one city to another, we might come across a nice, pretty water, waterfall and lake. That would be cool. Off to Marquette. 
Scott, to ruin your fantasy, if you have a beach episode, my guy's still wearing the full armor. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. Even Sasa didn't wear the full armor on the beach. The only difference is, instead of having his sword, he would just have a small shovel. Heavy plate now, just making the little sand castle. Yeah. Ah, there is the dot. Okay, so give me a second here. This is the main entrance for the loading bay for the dock. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which are marked with obviously broken boxes, so that they are obviously higher up on the building. But still, show you where they are. The squiggly shit is obviously the water of the harbor. And the large L shaped section is the actual like load the uh, dock at uh, pier, leading off into the main street uh, that leads off back into the Amon's harbor proper. Okay, okay. A phrase I will never see again. So does it have any places that we can set up kind of vantage points like Sniper Tower? Yep, if you want to go into the... Uh, we've got the skylights, if you're up above, you can shoot down from most of the warehouse. There's also the possibility that if I were to add cover in the inside of the warehouse, if he's want to move a bit of, if he's want to spend a bit of time kind of moving all the boxes around, you can probably set up a couple little like makeshift barricades that kind of set yourself behind or a big maybe in the management office, which oh actually, well done. Draw the lines. Oh yeah, different colours, that would help though. The management office is on the second floor in this corner. Overlooking most of the warehouse itself. So you can set up shop in there. And just because I'm nice, I'm going to give these a couple boxes worth of cover. If you choose to actually like shift stuff around, straight up eating a box at his face. Good. So, copy and uh, total want to set themselves up like an eagle's nest. Anyone else want to do any particular preparations and caution? Uh, precautionary stuff. All of the stuff Elspeth plans to do can be done in the blink of an eye, so... I just beat things with a sword, I don't have prep. If you want to go hide yourself somewhere. Shall we put our tokens on the board? Mm -hmm. Yep, put your tokens on the board when you think you're ready. How high up is the skylight? The skylight, I can't remember if I would mention a specific height for the building, but the skylights will be, I'll say for this, about 30 feet high up. Yeah, no, jump into the skylight. I'm hiding clover in a box. Can't really fit me in a box, so I guess I need to hide in the office. How do I put them? Um, where you would normally open your character sheet yeah. instead of clicking on it, drag it onto the white page. Oh. And really, if Clover can fit in a box, you can easily. As I'm pretty sure Clover is now a large creature. She is. Ah, shit, I accidentally drew all over the page. Let me undo that. 
you can stop people doing that with the 5 5e tools like you're all banned from drawing on my maps in my game yeah i never have it on draw i don't know why i it drew mm. clover's got a, a token one? scott you can yeah. delete that clover's got one oh where is clover there. Up there? Up there? there? Are there boxes where my model is? Are you the pawn? Yes, I am, I am, the, I am the very uncolorful one. <laughs> sure, there's a way to fix that. Uh... There is, but he'd need the character <laughs> picture. Yeah. You just grab yeah. something off the Reddit the next thing. But. You can you yeah. use the one that I'm using as my icon? You um, good, yeah. So, on your character sheet, when you open it, go to edit, and there should be a, uh, a box that says like avatar. Just upload your picture into that. And then once you've done it, delete your token and redrag it. Token. How do I delete the token? Uh, click on it and press delete on your keyboard. Oh, okay, that's a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Oop. There you go. Yeah. Box. I'm going to hide in a box by the door. Oh. Well, what I would like to do is like arrange boxes almost as if they were like leftovers from a shipping. They had just been left there by the door. Cool. And then I'll then get... get you your boxes. We we'll see this like a little red box is like the collection of boxes, kind of. Cool, kind of like one of those ones you would see in the warehouse, just all piled together. Yeah, miscellaneous pile, as we'll call it. Yeah. I, I try and do the same, and then I get Eric to help me do a pile over by me in the opposite corner. Cool, and copy. Where are you going to be? Because I know Total is above. Uh, same. I was just waiting to see if you drew a specific thing or not. Uh, but I'll be kind of like over there, if need be. So if Toto's there, I'll be over there. Okay, you two are on the skylights looking down the way. The other person in the centre. We'll just see there's like, there are other little bits of cut, like, objects lying around, but there's nothing like specifically set up for like protection. So it's pretty much open territory here. So. You guys are all set, I believe. Uh, I will say that I'm I'm kind of got the the carpet out and I'm laying on it just so it's ready to go if I need to get down. Okay, hang on. Give me a second. I want to do something. Here. Um, I will take off, I will keep my armour on, I'm not that stupid this time. I will take off my weapon and anything that looks like it would not befit what I'm about to pretend to be doing. And probably leave them where, round about where Cloud is. And pretty much go, well these are useless to me at the moment anyway. Not like I can use the damn things and I'll pop them down there and then I'll go back to where I am. That carpet icon is adorable. Yeah, I just seen it. I was like, oh, I'll do it for the carpet just now. I'll find, yeah. I'll try and find one closer to the Platinum Dragon esque look of the carpet has in game, but until then, that will do. 
you move it to the map layer, you can I can get on top of it. There you go. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Crap, it just does the little tassel things as so if like a thumbs up. Oh, just to make a point, I'm going to have my sword drawn when I'm hiding in the box. Sword or scimitar? Scimitar. Double-ended, yep. Go. Yep. Go. 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 I'll have it held in a way that it's not like sticking out the side of the box. <laughs> just like a spontaneous sharp thing up here from the side. Reverse yeah, magician's box. Just so, your trap is set. Now all you need is to bait it. Yes, so I will dress myself, I will close my eyes for a second and change my clothes as the change bringer into something that will A, hide my elven chain, but B, look like I'm a street prostitute right now. So probably shortcut, low cut, if I can get it. Emphasizing her nicer features. Um, she will keep her hair down, uh, but she will also press digitation and make her makeup like she would normally do it uh, if she was going to work in the houses she used to work in. And she will take a deep breath and then she will cast message and go to Jackson and go, darling, if you wanted to play Peeping Tom, you're more than welcome, but all you could do is pay for my time. I'm more than welcome, more than happy to entertain you. Silence hangs in the air for a few moments. And a few moments more. Maybe the PO is not answering. Oh, darling, you're playing shy now. Come, come, you can watch me, but you don't feel like talking to me in person. What, do you not feel like finishing the job? Is this why you don't like people that do my prof profession? Is it because you can't finish? <laughs> Jackson will remember that. <laughs> I mean, if you Again. want to give it a go, you're more than welcome. I'm at the docks right now. I'm waiting on my next client, but I can fit you in. <laughs> Maybe I can help you finish. You just get a very quick, sharp answer. Which dock? I will tell him where I am. And there's a very scathing reply of 30 minutes. Oh, darling, I'll be waiting. I'll make sure my current <laughs> gentleman is gone long before then. And I will send a message to everyone in the room going, he says 30 minutes, I don't assume he will be. He will be either here a lot quicker or a lot later. And I would have been saying what I was saying in message out loud so everyone could hear me. Ooh, bitch. Love it. <laughs> So you've got half an hour, guys. Is there anything else you want to do before this little altercation kicks off? Game of cards, oh, maybe. <laughs> I have a deck of cards on my character, by the way. Strip poker. Elspeth is probably already wearing fairly little, so there's not much she could strip off right now. And it might take me some time to get it back on. <laughs> Um, I think uh, Cloud 
on here in here should be about half an hour. Cloud will probably go over to um, Eric and um, say this might help a little bit. Probably about 15 minutes before he's supposed to be here, and he will use the wand of invisibility and turn you invisible. Ooh. And then go back to his hiding spot. Oh, you hear under the breath is, I'm an invisible dragon now. <laughs> not hating on spellcasters now, eh? <laughs> still not a fan of it. Still. I'm still not a fan of magic. Magic. I am not a magic caster, though I am, but still. Ah, items he's fine with. Because we come with instructions. <laughs> I like that. I don't like things that don't come with instructions. He has never once bought me build your own furniture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as in time draws near a ten minute eight all the way there if five. You can just see that the uh, time is starting to get ever so closer to the uh, the night gets ever so darker. It would appear that there's almost a full moon in the sky, just brightly shining down from down below the skylights. With very ample mood lighting. Until faintly in the distance, Elspeth can hear the footsteps and the thudding of a cane. As she Coming. hears that, she's just going to quickly send a message to Devlin, going, just making you aware you may have incoming soon. I'm about to catch myself a killer. Does Elspeth say that out loud? No. Um, could I message Toto around roughly the same time, saying, whatever happens now, I need you to trust me. That will just kind of. Oh, I think Sam is dying again. Better. Better. Yeah. Much. Yeah. Just side eye and just give a nod. Just this once, you can go back to not trusting me later. That's it for me. Cool. Again, footsteps get louder and the thudding of a cane walking down the pier. You can just see his top hat just start to appear into view at the windows of the, the warehouse. She'll just be sort of lounging on the floor. I guess this is the most safest place for her to be right now, of course. And uh, just sort of acting like she's not got a care in the world. And eventually, you will see at the door as it gets slow, as it just opens up slightly. Again, full suit, fancy looking cane, just slowly walks into the building. Does it look like the man that I had been very close to at the ballroom? Hard to tell. Uh, as he's initially walking in, do so you hear his voice just going, My, my, what do we have here? Does it sound like the same guy? Yep. Well, you called it. What you have here is someone that doesn't change. Evidently not. And he just starts to kind of not stop, but kind of starts to circle. If I've got a good line of sight on him, I'll cast Hunter's Mark on him. Oh, Hunter's Mark. Everyone else can start to slowly see him start to creep into view. He's already walked past me. Yep. 
Well, yeah, everyone else has seen him. Full <laughs> view, he's walking, circling around. She's not reacting. She, he's trying. She thinks he's trying to be intimidating, and he, she's not giving him that. Um, so, did you come for a couple of lessons? My prices are very reasonable. I'm sure they are for peasants. For, del for delinquents. Oh, darling. And... You would be surprised the amount of uh, rich folk, politicians, kings I've slept with. It's not all peasants and, co and delinquents. Really? I wouldn't have thought you managed to climb so high. Not on a ladder, at least. On top of a client, perhaps, and he kind of slams the cane down just a little bit and stops in the middle of the warehouse, not far from you. It's going to you. What better way to climb than silly little men that don't know better? Or cats. And he just raises an eyebrow. Oh no, he's different. Really? I change occasionally. Not very often. But he's different. Really? Different? Still skulking around in the shadows? Still <laughs> clutching a shark? Oh. Dagger of Cloud puts um, Neogi poison on his uh, dagger of venom. He was protecting me. <laughs> For now. But to, to insinuate that that little act of kindness is to insinuate change on his behalf is naive, even for you, it is naive. More naive than I thought you would be, of all people. He starts to circle again. Oh, darling, I don't. I've learned long long ago that I do not care about people's past, I care what and how they behave now. So to me, people don't change because they are how I encounter them now. Can you just roll his eyes back as you're talking? I don't know. How was it working in the prison? How is it now everyone thinks you're dead? He kind of just looks at you as if it. Hmm. Oh, what? Did you not think I'd do some research, darling? Please. You almost killed me. Almost. Once again, didn't manage to finish. Not surprising, really. But utter so subtle twitch in his cheek. I had to know the name of the man that at least attempted. Well, not the name. I probably do know the name. I didn't even bother looking. Just knowing at least what you did and where you've come from. You couldn't possibly grasp it, even if I did tell you, silly little whore. So where did your little friend come from, honestly? You don't even have the balls to do it yourself. You have to leave it to someone else. Something else that doesn't surprise me. After a liberating uh, revelation I had, whilst actually working in the prison for now. 
Ever wonder what would happen if you stared into the abyss? I'm pretty sure I've tried. It's called alcohol, and it's not fun. Ah, yes. Tell me. How many bottles would you have went through? Again, he's just keeping like and he even actually taps one of the crates, just kind of sharply, just like revealing it to be like a full of wine casts. How many endless nights would you plow yourself a drink while someone else plow uh, plowed you? It's twirling the cane at this point. Probably more nights than uh, you've had someone anywhere near you, so what would that be? One? Anyway, darling, this conversation is boring me now. Do what you came to do or bugger off. Oh, I've been doing it the entire time I've been here. Cloud goes for him. Second, he comes close enough with his back to a cloud. Yeah. And at that point, I will dimension door to the other side of the the building. Hang on a second. Just grab him up just right now. I can just picture this like, in the chat thing. She's like, Clover's is getting fed berries the entire time, all the shades getting fun. It was originally bread. I was like, don't feed the dog no, bread. No, 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 no. I seen the thing, I like, don't feed the dog bread. It's like berries. Berries with it. You just got my guy sitting in the box gripping the sword, like, I'm going to kill him. Going to kill him. Sitting thinking, like, don't jump out the box yet. Don't jump out the box yet. I was like shaking where he's got the arrow fully drawn the whole time. Like he's I think our entire group is there to look at this guy going, just for the last five minutes alone you need to die. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, everyone's like, don't you insult Elspeth? Well, even Eric's like, they've got a noble goal. They're trying to redeem themselves. That's an honourable thing. And he's like, I will not stand for this. It won't let me fucking upload the actual talking bastard. <laughs> I had a specific picture do you in want to, mind. Do you want to send it to <clears> me? <throat> I can get it set up in two seconds. No, it's just my browser just being a dick. Uh, I'm trying to get a very specific person to get to be used as the token here. Ah, uh, so annoying. Give me two seconds, guys. You're Honestly. good, man. Cloud would have hit the uh, button on the dagger as well. So uh, yeah, hopefully this has works. A uh, dagger of venom. Oh, it's got and, an injection point. Yeah, dagger of venom coat. Not only got its own venom, but coated in uh, neogi poison. Cloud wants this dude hurt. Don't kill him. I will have reminded everyone before we start this not to kill him. So I'm going to make a point, right? You said not to kill him. He doesn't need to have all of his limbs. As long as he's not dead, I don't care. I doubt Toto will remember that when it comes to firing our... Where the scimitar lands, the scimitar lands. If it takes something with it, so be it. Oh. No good Q wounds. Bugger. Seven intelligence, he forgets to fucking eat most days. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you need lower intelligence to forget to eat. Yeah, Animals like, remember to eat, so... You get hungry, you eat. Like, lower than six means you can't read, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, Elsa's got 15 and still can't read. <laughs> oh, but is yours not due to the fact you need glasses? No, hers is due to the fact she never learnt to read. This is a backstory thing, so Stephanie. Mm. All right. Toto just works off an of instinct. He gets hungry, he eats. He gets thirsty, he drinks. He gets horny, he fucks. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like such a Conan approach to everything. Just like, when he's hungry, he's hungry. When he's horny, he fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing has like Conan, only pain. And when he needs to piss someone off, he shits in a box and posts it to them. Ah, uh, yeah. The posting's a bit more advanced. Oh, it's yeah, only because he read it in a book. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else's primal instinct gets to piss somebody off, goes to the Royal Mail. It went to a war. All that effort just for that. Ugh, fucking pain in the arse, computer, honestly. Anyway, so Elspeth is dimensioning door out. Yeah, I will be over here <laughs> zip, zip. in the doorway. You're going to have a dragonborn emerging from a large series of boxes. No, you're going to have boxes moving invisibly for a second. Oh, yeah, you're invisible. <laughs> <laughs> invisible. All the boxes just going to just spontaneously splatter about like ragdoll physics style just as you borrow your way through. Okay, so remind me that uh, who's fired off what? Uh, clouds darted up to him first. And he's going to stab him with his dagger. So, as Elspeth just kind of like bumps out the way, turns back, and just sees this flurry of motion and roll me an attack. Twenty-six hits. I should probably go back to the chat log, shouldn't I? Let me get the roll, I think, to see if he makes. I still thing. love the sneak attack ring. A gif is brilliant. <laughs> oh, you you haven't seen anything, mate. Wait till we start getting proper into this. Some of these gifs are fucking amazing. Oh, oh my god, this is fantastic. Oh, I FYI, mean... just to explain to folk, my weapon is very similar to the Darth Maul blade. That's what I was hoping you'd say. So I've got the double, no, double bladed scimitar, so it's literally like two swords that have been glued together. So it's like a uh, Thanos' blade. Yes. Yes. Nice. Perfectly done. Okay, and with that, he fails the constitution, Dave. Oh, he fails all of it, and um, that will be assassination. Yep. Give me the damage total. This boy's in a lot of pain, quick. Eighty-six. Uh-huh. Plus whatever the Neogi poison does. No, that's already there. That's on the sneak attack. Oh my god. Anyone else what I just fail into that? Well, yes. I'm going to have to charge over to him. Yeah, uh, go for it. I, I'll just say for the fact that when he's been took surprise, you're already gunning for him. I'll take a shot with my uh, short bow. Yeah, I'm letting the bow go too. She's going to okay. be heatish. Okay, I haven't put Maka on the board, but I'll just say she's going to fire off a flame bolt. Uh, so, everyone, your attack. 25 will hit. I'll give him it right because he's completely surrounded. Come on. That's. 24 points damage. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, I have to fill the script because his name is Manuel. Let's go. Scimitar swings up and see if you want to click the actual... Words you... double-bladed scimitar in the chat log. Yeah. Yeah, it will do the damage for you. And I'm pretty sure 22 hits as well, uh, Trevi. So, I accidentally, I accidentally sent mine to GM, but I rolled twenty-seven. 
Yeah, 27 to hit. This is fucking amazing. Do the damage. Come on. 14 off of the bow, and then sneak attack. Hunter's Mark and Colossus Lair. So that's what, 14, uh, 19, 24, 25 points of damage. How much? 25? 25. Yeah. Oh, I, need to, I need to add another D4 onto mine. Come on, guys, let me get a calculator. Uh, is Clover is going to run over as well. I forgot she was a thing. Okay, you have, you see, it's over to do thing. Give me a second. And because she has pack tactics, she gets advantage. Go, cool. go ahead. Fucking crazy. So a 19? 19 hits. So she does 11 piercing. And he needs to make a strength saving throw. No, he won't. He's fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> As you all, right? Fucking dagger of venom with the yogi poison, the arrows, the bow, everything, and the double blade scimitar, and then finally Clover just like sinking her teeth into the guy's neck. He doesn't even get a breath off as he just goes limp in amongst you all. And his form slightly shimmers a little bit and changes into just some random dude with a hat, with a hat and cane. He was being controlled. No, he's disguised himself. He disguised this person and sent him to us. Poor bastard. As they're all having that conversation up there, Elspeth. You, you notice that the moonlight behind you has started to just like slowly disappear and on the ground you just see the silhouette of the high up collar, the exaggerated hat form and you turn around and see the big old white grin. Give me one second to see if I can stand the heat here. Eighteen. Hits. It doesn't go for you with the blade. You just feel these cold hands just wrap one round your neck, one round your waist, and it starts to pull you into itself. If anyone's got a counter spell ready, aside from Elspeth. Can... Oh, well, oh, actually, yeah, go for it. I'll give you one chance here. Yeah. Oh, what? Do I need to roll? Uh, I'm going to cast it at level five, so. I don't know what level the spell is he's casting. Let me just double check. Why you got to use that gif? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to cry? That's counter. I counter spell his counter spell. Okay. Come on, Dean. Maybe you want to be like. Everyone's all just like, oh, we just fucking annihilated it. Oh, wait, that's not him. Turn around, just see this thing appear behind Elspeth. Oh, yeah. So it's same level or less, or does it need to be two levels? No, it's Okay, you need to make an ability check. I was just double checking the level of Dimension Door. It's a fourth oh. level, so it instantly fails because I'm casting it at fifth level. Dimension Door is a fourth level. I've got it. It's the spell I've got. It says here if it's casting a spell of fourth level or higher, make an ability check using the spell, but it's third level or lower, it's instantly failed. 
Uh, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of 4th level or higher, the interrupted spell has no effect if its level is less than or equal to the level of the spell slot you used. So I'm using a 5th level spell slot, its 4th level is lower than my 5th level spell slot. Ooh, I'll go with that then. Let me put the ripper on the board. And at that point I scream. Just in case they hadn't seen him grabbing me, I'm now screaming. Uh, at this point, I could have done a thing, but I'm not gonna. Let's see that for later. Okay. Well, in a second, I'll find a thing for a uh, token for. The There we go. Now we'll do the ripper. So is it what you're gonna say? Um, would I be able to using uh movement bonus action dash action dash be able to come down and go ball straight to it elsewhere? Make me an athletics check with disadvantage. Thirteen. I'll see you get about halfway, and with all your motor skills still recovering from, you know, your lobotomy, you pretty much just land on the floor, given that all of that shit in motion, da -da 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 -da, and uh, you land about here on the actual ground floor. So I'm I'm on the ground floor, but I haven't moved forward at all. I'm still kind of over there. Yeah. Uh... And that's like all 90 feet of movement used. You're like seven spaces ahead of where you are, but on the ground. Oh, sorry. Yeah, move the token forward to where I highlighted there. Uh, and that's all Getting my movement down, used, yeah? And then moving forward, you then just face plant on the ground. That's all the actions you described, all gone. Okay. You're still recovering from your lobotomy, so it's going to be a case of you yeah. fucked. For a considerable uh, would I be able to use my action surge and take another uh, action dash? Go for it. Uh, so I'm going to use the action surge and just use another action dash to just get as close to Elspeth as possible. So 30 feet of movement will get me like right there. Uh, and I can't do anything at the moment, so I'm just going to kind of chill there. Okay, at that point, proper initiative, please, everyone. Sleep well, With coffee, Batman. Sorry, Baker, what are you going to say? Uh, Dom's going. So, it's uh, night. Take care, Dom. Take care, dude. Well, Jaeger, Trevi, if need be. Uh, but I'll have Trevi kind of sitting at the back. Foss, uh, click your token, roll your initiative again, and then just change it in the turn order. Not to 20. Second, I will roll the initiative for the Ripper. Oh, oh, I need to do Clover as well. Okay, so it's just into the same order. Cool, so, K, 
top of the round. Oh, turn tracker went away for me. Listen, I didn't click on the damn thing. Where'd it go? There we go. So, top of the order. Boss, you're up. Uh, one, two, three, four. Even if I leg it, I'm not going to get over. Mm. I only moved 30. <clears throat> In theory, I could burn the action search to move again. That would give me the distance I would need. Specifically, the distance I would need to get like, to his right hand side. I would burn both my movements for that goal. <clears throat> Odd question. I can't use my action surge and then use my extra attack for the round, can I? I'm sure you can. Uh -huh. Well, without using your initial action, yeah, you could use it. I'll do that then. I'll use my initial action to move action surge to get next to him and then use my extra attack to actually strike him. You use the the your extra movement as your action surge, and then use your regular attack so you get your extra attack as well. Yeah, that's that works. Potential. Yeah. All you're really doing the action surge is to get the extra distance. Just means you burn your action surge, but it uh, gets me closer defending them. Helps me keep people alive. So we've still got my normal attack and my extra, yeah? Yeah. Okie dokie. Okay, so you just run right up into the, rip into the Ripper's face again, this amorphous, exaggerated humanoid form with the high up collar kind of flailing back, exaggerated top hat, all you see is kind of black, deep black, where the form would be, apart from the big white, toothy grin sitting amongst itself. Clutching mm -hmm. on it, it's like, oh, look, my prize. <clears throat> I'm not going to take a negative if I aim for the the arms. If, if I specifically, time, I'll if I give you a if you want a time, go for an aim shot for the arms. No, to get Elvis free, yeah. Strike one. Even where a penalty, I think you're. A 25 is going to hit. Well, yeah, that's going to hit. So, roll me some damage. No, don't roll that again. Wrong button. Sorry. There you go. Oh. Okay, 23 points slashing damage. Jesus, fuck <laughs> away. <laughs> it's a double-handed weapon and I'm a strength-based character, so... <laughs> I'm not even using the extra action for the swing back, which is a bonus D4. So that'll be a bonus action, so yeah, mm -hmm. if you want to use your bonus action for that, just like, yeep, and do the extra damage. Hey! And I still have my other attack, so I'm going to swing one more time. Okay, this time, it. just this, this time, just at him, because I take it, like, me swinging at his arms, he's released Ellsworth. He, he, at this point, I'll say that his grip is Loosened off, and Elspeth is able to wriggle free. Okay. I'm going to strike at the front of him again to try and not push him back, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Critical hit. Yay. Well, I cracked a 19 as well, so. Um, critical hit, I need to roll. Uh, just click it, it'll do it automatically. Just click it. Oh, does it? Yeah. And we just doubled the the, the first number, so that would be, what, 40 points fucking damage? This is a You only game. doubled the dice rolls, so it's the dice roll was 5. 25. So, yeah, 25 points of damage. Saying correct, this, but I'm just looking at it and the same double is like, Jesus, fuck, no. <laughs> but yeah, that's what... 
over 50 points of damage in a single goal. That's amazing. This is what the party's been missing, guys. A tank who could actually fucking hit hard. Yay. I think I've been doing all right, thank you. Yeah, you have. <laughs> yeah, you've been doing all right. In one fucking but... round. I love it how one character comes in and both Cloud and Toto feel super insecure. <laughs> Big buff Dragonborn walks into the room. Wait a minute. Well, with that, my turn will be over then. So. Oh, there's one person and then there's the Ripper who I'm now standing directly in front of and have just cut. This is going to hurt. It just turns and smiles at you. After just letting Elspeth go after your first attack and just kind of does that whole sort of boy. Look at you. That's my job. It. Reaches into its cloak and pulls its weapon. Cloud, you're up. Um, bonus action. I will blow the whistle of fine familiar and summon uh, my trism. 30 feet above me and tell it to go look for um, the real Jackson. Um, so start circling the area and seeing if you can find it and hide now in an alley nearby. And then I will move uh, 30 feet up and then burn my feline agility to get all the way up to next to him. And then action will be to summon the blade staff and take my two attacks. Okay. Uh, make me a perception check for your Trissom. As it's flying up above. Nothing at the minute. <laughs> it literally, as it's flying around, a random seagull just happens to collide with it mid-air, just like... That is literally it's the drone thing that handed the airport all over again. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Bloody chism. Oh well. Nothing. You just like knocked the fuck out by Sammy the seagull. <laughs> okay. Oh, so Since you're flagging, twenty-four will hit. And 21, and we'll hit. And you're going before him in combat again. Yes, I am. So another sneak um, assassination, so... That gift pleases me so much right now. 39 points of damage on the first one. Correct. Thirty-nine. Awesome. And then the second one will be... Bloody hell. Nice. Natural 10 on both weapon attack rolls. So an extra 17 on top. Nice. So after the Dragonborn takes a good few whacks at him, Cloud just darts up and just does his usual sort of hackety-hackety routine. And you see parts of the shadow start to like disperse and blow away, and that smile turns into a frown very quickly. Woohoo! Okay, is that closed turn? Yeah, that's everything I can do. Okay. I look up my old buddy. Save on this would be okay. So <coughs> that's good on where this ripper would be. I need everyone next to the ripper to make me a, a constitution saving throw, please. Um, could I ask a question as I'm making this? Would I be able to use my reaction to activate my a ring of silence? Uh, 
if you do, but you won't get uncanny dodge. Or, mm. or evasion or whatever it is that would normally have it. That's fine, but I'm wondering whether if I activate it, whether the spell will get cancelled out if, if there's a verbal component to it. The, well, you can activate it and find out. Yeah, I'll, I'll activate it and find out. Okay, you're definitely activating it? Yep. I'm waiting for the Willy Wonka, you get nothing, Serling. More like, womp, womp. You get nothing. And you're lucky that that rolled very low because if, uh, anyone who rolled in that circle less than 18 takes 28 points in the chronic damage. Less than 18? Damn. Yep. Everybody. These then. boys have, been up, have got, got a little bit of an upgrade. And you notice that it's not the one standing in front of you that seems to have done anything. It just sat there and there's a circle appeared around it and... I'm going to ask a really stupid question here. What number am I looking at on mine? Because I've got two here for some reason. Is it the left or the right? Uh, so yours is set to always roll with advantage, so you're looking at the left. Which would be the normal one. If you were rolling with Thank advantage, you. you'd take the right. Thank you. There's, Thank uh, you. there's actually one little amendment I should probably make to the turn order thing here. So when it says Ripper, it's actually Rippers. There's more than one. You're enjoying this too much, Scott. So does that Ripper over enough. there take that damage as well? It appears to not be harmed at all. Almost as if it's immune to necrotic damage. Well, shit the bed. Peering out from behind the end of the warehouse is a second ripper down here. And with a passive perception. I'm pretty sure Toto will realize that as he's standing up in the skylight on top of the, uh, the carpet, this happens to turn his head round and spots a third right behind him, just like yeah. slinking its way up on the roof. Oh, it's bloody shadow clone jutsu. <laughs> See the one that was in the middle of all you guys? It turns back to Elspeth and just, again, the frown turns into a grin and it's going to just lunge forward. Let's see. Thirteen, I believe that's a miss. It is a miss, it doesn't hit. Just. You see its claws form up and it just tries to swipe, uh, grab at you and it kind of just like, overextends itself. Turns round, almost like just a big swirling pack, pile of just like black shadow comes in again with a grin and tries to grab you one more thing. That's a grab, yep. Gets a hold of you. And again, you see the incantation getting made uh, up there's as There's a ring a of silence blue. he can't cast Dimension Door, it requires a verbal component. Not that I mentioned though. I'm just saying he's like he got a hold of you again. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just very unsettling the fact that he's just got like, his death grip on you. And even just kind of turns back at the dragonborn, he's like, hee hee. Almost with the sort of the big smile on its face. Ripper number three. Up behind Toto. You see that very familiar blade being pulled out. <laughs> And it is coming for you. Oh, yeah, that hits. Oh, that fucking hits. Uh, what the... uh, I lost the stat thing for it. I believe it's a D. Hmm. Uh... 
1d8 plus 4 slashing damage and you are wounded with 4 points necrotic damage and it cut you deep just like for the first slash second slash so that's what 11 total for the first yep cool you're doing better than any of us standing next to the necrotic bomb that went off 27 again really the dice are favoring me today not too much that's all right i'm feeling pretty good with all my hit points elspeth is not <laughs> My current entire job is just keep Captain Grabby Fingers away from Elsbeth. Okay, I know a wound and your six points necrotic damage on that one, so that's a total of 16 for that second hit. <coughs> I'm still looking <laughs> fucking far. Thank you. And that will be their turn. Clover. Clover is going. Hey. To use Doing what? So... Her fifty feet of movement to run here, and she's gonna fucking bite the ass off of this thing that's got that's got her mum in a grip. I love this. Mm. Uh, Seventeen to hit. Seventeen, unfortunately, just comes shy of it. <laughs> that's what it tries to be, and just gets like the tail end of its cloak. She or the cool like that it has. Yeah, she doesn't get multi attack, so that's all she can do. Oh shit! Uh, yeah, don't don't worry about it. But next time, I've, I I can reduce that damage. Just... Okay, Toto, you're up. All right, I'm gonna use the uh, eighty feet of movement on the rug to come up, kind of just in the top corner outside of the warehouse. Hunter's mark. This one. That's, I know it's taking some damage, so I'm going to carry on hitting it. And, and then I'm going to... Moving away from the Ripper? Yeah, I know it's going to get an attack opportunity. Just while I get the that. Scott, once to make it consensual. <laughs> yeah, 21 hit. Can I Boom. see the Ripper up there? You're currently being like bear hugged by the one, but if you want to make a perception check to see if you do spot it, I just want to see if I can cutting words it. So let me see if I can see it. Vocal component, verbal, no? Oh, yeah, of course. You're correct. Sorry. I thought the spell got stopped. It would have if it was the one that was in the middle casting it. But... I know now. Seven points slashing and that's three wounds with a necrotic damage at ten. Ooh. Next round is going to be painful for Total. So, Total, what are you doing once you flew away after getting chipped? Move my hunter's mark to that guy. That's, uh, on Elspeth. Okay. And then I'm gonna Sky Sentinel it. So I'm just gonna roll all three attacks first. Cool. Let me get the calculator ready. 29, yeah. 23, and 29 all hit. Okay, this is the first. Fifteen piercing, three lightnings. So this is it. 18 plus. Do I get sneak attack for it? Uh, I would say not for that one because it's already made an action this turn. Which, which one are you attacking? The one on Elspeth or the other yeah, one? Th so yeah. So it's surrounded, one. but there's like a million people within five feet of it. So. It should get sneak attack mechanically on this. Assassinate Scott... it wouldn't get because it's already taken a turn, but sneak yeah. attack it would. Unless Scott's 
ju judge us otherwise. Well, I would have said no, but you know what? Just go for it. Uh, so what's that? Seven, eleven, twenty-nine, six. Tw yeah, twenty-nine for the. F So 29 for the first, for the second, it was 17 for the second, and 11 for the third. No Colossus there for the next second two? Once per round. Okay, barrage of arrows come in. This thing is looking pretty rough. And that's, and now I'll get my second attack as well. Cool, cool. Just, uh, yeah, no, no lightning damage. Thirty hits. <laughs> okay, how do you want to do this? That's one ripper down. Ah, uh, just, just hanging off of the side of the the rug, just, just firing arrows till it's dead. Nothing fancy. Elspeth practically watches as it's in the grip of this thing. Every space of its body that's not got her in front of it basically just gets riddled with arrows until it just, like, fizzles away. <laughs> and let's her go. That's my turn. Cool. Elspeth? How... Why does your fucking cone of silent nonsense? 15 uh, around me. Okay, so I'm going to move out of range of copy 15 feet to there. I can still cast spells into it, can't I? When I'm out of it, because I'm the yeah. one using the verbal component. You, cast it into it. you just can't cast it while you're in that bubble. Perfect. So I'm now out of the bubble. I'm going to haste cloud and inspire Eret. So it's a 1d10, you can add 20, uh, d20 roll. And that will be my turn. Sorry, I just saw the haste gift. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee. Um, okay, I'm still like, still recovering from my, uh, I forget what the term for brain surgery is. Um, but lobotomy. can I? Lobotomy, there we go. Um, I'm going to quickly use my free action assigned to clouds uh, using uh, thieves can saying uh, get her run and then can I see these two guys can I see this guy and that guy or do I need to make a perception check uh, make a perception check for the one in the lower ground the other one's still on the roof just a back away from the window 15 15 I'll say you spot it Cool. Just in the uh, corner, yeah, just kind of peeking around the corner, just like flipping you off. I will like move up. That sort of like cheeky, sort of like peek around the corner kind of thing. Cool. Mm -hmm. I will move up to about like. I'm going to use bonus action hide. Okay, I think that's still full. Yep. Yeah. 29. And then I will peek around the corner and take a shot with my. Pistol. Uh, with advantage because I was hidden. Um, and I'll be 20 points of damage. And then I'll use half my movement to kind of get up in this guy's face. So they're like over there. 
Cool. So the gunshot hits it, and by the time it recoils back, you're like closing up to its face. Yeah, and that's my turn. Yep, that's my turn. Back to the top of the order, Eret. Your move. No, it's me, sorry. I was on there for yeah. a second there, the forest. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Well, standard movement, I can get my ass over here. Yep, you can get right up in its face. Yep, which is where I need to be. So, standard movement, getting myself all up in its face. That should leave me with two attacks still. Yeah. Whenever you attack, you can attack three times instead of twice. However, I'm using... Yeah, I'll attack twice. And I'll use my bonus action to do the bonus d4 damage on the first strike. Go, go for it. See if you can hit him. And I'm crit again. Thank you. First swing. Thirty-one plus four, so thirty. Uh, yeah, thirty. Uh, so thirty-nine altogether. And second swing. And damage. Twenty-four hits. Total damage is what? 23. Okay. You just rush up and just belt this thing. Yep. And just recoils back and just looks at you as if, like, oh, you want to play? No, oh, I do. Is that your turn? Yeah, that's all Ooh. I can do. Cloud. Um, not knowing there's one on the roof, I will telepathically say to both Elsbeth, uh, well, to Toto, but saying it to Elsbeth as well, um, go grab Elsbeth, knowing he's on the carpet, and I will use my <laughs> main action to cast Arm of Agathis. Cool. So, Arm of Agathis comes up. Yep. Um, he just sort of raises his hand and all these sort of like tiny little uh, icicle leaves, like cherry blossoms, just start floating around him. Um, and then he will move... Nope, that's ruler. That's pointer. He will move... He has enough movement to get right round this dude now and uh, he will use his yeah he'll use uh, all his attacks on uh, the ripper and I can't get advantage so it will just be straight rolls Thirteen to seventeen miss the twenty nine hits. Twenty three points of damage. It is starting to look like it's having a bad day. And that's the end of my turn. Okay. 
when the rippers turn up here it's going to move forward take a little peek down and it knows what it's going to do it's going to descend down to the floor for an athletics check Please roll in that one. <laughs> Elsa oh. turns into a shadow face planting the floor. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'm thinking more like that ah, makes it. I was thinking see if it did fail, it'd be more like a uh, red mist from Kikas when he just kinda jumps down from the dumpster and goes, ah my ankle. <laughs> ah <laughs> Just Peter Griffin just sitting on the floor. Ah but again, it, it comes, descends down from the roof, hits the ground in like an ink blot, and then reforms itself. And just smiles as it just creeps ever so quickly forward. And Elspeth. Mm hmm. Yep, an 18 hit. Okay. Grappled again. Cutting word. Oh, yes. I'll cutting word it, actually. Thank you. But is it a reaction to use cutting word? It is, yes. Toss up between that and counter spell, isn't it? It's grappled me. That be its action. I don't know if it can cast a spell. Oh, God. If I can get out of the grapple, um, then it's if it casts a spell, it's useless. So I'm gonna cutting words the grapple. Go ahead. No, not enough. So it's got me. Okay, it's got a hold of you, and all you hear as soon as it uh, gets a hold of you is the movement of footsteps and a cane. Reappearing out of the dark. As if he just reappears, as if invisibility is just dropped. That stone cold straight face just looking at you whilst you're in the ripper's grip. And he goes, you're going to rue the day you stepped on my toes, dear. But for now, I think we should probably change things to a more private venue. As he steps up to where the ripper is, taps his cane. You, him and the ripper that are in that room in the warehouse. Teleport straight out unless you can find something to stop it. I've used my reaction on cutting words, I can't. Uh, would Clover get a reaction to try and bite the asshole to get it off of me? Uh... Trevi's upstairs with cutting, um, with uh, counter spell. Does Trevi have counter spell? I don't think she does, I think she's just talking about dispel magic. Druids don't Let normally get counterspell. Let me get our character sheet and I'll have a wee quick look. Maka. Um, Maka should have counterspell. No, she doesn't. We checked last week. She doesn't. She hasn't taken it. Shit! Yeah, she hasn't taken it. <laughs> I don't think it's a reaction to use a scimitar as a frisbee. You can see through walls, Eva. The only person that can see what's going on right now is Trevi and Clover. And I'll just say that where Clover is right now, because Clover's over here. Uh -huh. She just turns around and just sees her uh, mama go, bye bye. Would I get to cast message <laughs> before I go? I'll allow it. Who are you sending it to? 
Uh, I'll send it to Cloud and go go to Devden. He'll be able to find me. Having heard that, Cloud's ears perk up and he just looks up and just sees the Ripper just turn and just do that whole sort of like almost patronising royal hand wave as it just disappears and just fades away. And that's what we're going to call it for tonight. Becca, why is every campaign that my character appears in is the same session your character gets buggered? <laughs> so what did I say? I told you you should have had the ki ch uh, the kiss of the change bringer. You can't get grappled. <laughs> Hang on, you were the one that decided to keep it and not give it to Elspeth. Because Elspeth denied taking it. You didn't offer it to her. I did. Did you? I don't remember you offering it to her. He offered you the Kiss of the Chainsbringer, the headband, and something else. I no, think. no he didn't. You took the change, uh, Kiss of the Chainsbringer and offered me the headband, and I said no thank you to the headband. Damn, why doesn't anybody want to grab me then? <laughs> Fuck, where's my girl going? It's fine, it's fine. I've got a brilliant idea. Just keep concentration on haste. It only lasts for a minute, but <laughs> Cloud is like supersonic. He can scour the city in seconds. We did so much damage. Yeah. Yeah. Two nat 20s. Jesus. On a side note, I'm going to turn the stream off. So night stream. Night stream. Night stream. <laughs>